Coverage of the Dakota Bowl 2012 on KVLY TV 11 is brought to you by Farmers Union Insurance, Bank of North Dakota, North Dakota State Seed Department, Independent Community Bankers of North Dakota, American Bank Center, Stop and Go, Ag Country Farm Credit Services, U.S. Banks, Northwest Tire, Sanford Health, North Dakota Family Foster Care, and Nodak Mutual Insurance. North Dakota Sports welcomes you to the Alaris Center in Grand Forks for Dakota Bowl 2012. I'm Lee Timmerman along with Jamal Spencer bringing you all four state championship games today. And first of all, welcome Jamal to your first high school statewide telecast. Well, it's good to be here. <laughs> Hopefully we have a great day full of football. Like you said, we got tons of games to call today. And of course, these teams battled all year and battled through the playoffs to get here. The culmination of uh, their high school careers, isn't it? We've got some seniors who've been just trying to get to this moment, some players trying to get back and some teams here for the very first time. So like I said, it's just hopefully everybody can go out on the note that they're trying to reach. Well, let's show you what we'll have for you today here at the Dakota Bowl. First game is our Class A championship. And everyone's been wondering when the Bison and the Sioux are going to play. <laughs> well, they're going to play today and they're going to play right now. It's West Hope, Lenberg, Newburgh, and, uh, and it is the Sioux from West Hope MG and the Bison from Hazen. And that'll be our first championship game, followed by the nine-man matchup where New Rockford Cheyenne will take on Divide County, the number one and number two ranked teams in the state. Definitely, that's also going to be a good matchup. Last year, you had a very high-scoring nine-man game. Hopefully, you can keep going in the same mode. And this year, we're going to move into the Class A championship game. You have Shanley and Grafton. These two teams know each other very well. Rematch of last year's state title game. And then the 3A game, you're going to have great Bismarck rivalry, Bismarck Century taking on the Bismarck Demons. And that game, just like you mentioned, the one, uh, one before, a rematch of last year's championship game. Well, Scott Westerberg will be the guy roaming the sidelines for us, and I know he's down there now. Let's find out what he's up to. Scott? Yeah, LT and Jamal, like you guys mentioned, two very different uh, groupings of games. The first two feature teams that weren't here last year, none of the players the first two games have played in a state championship game. WNG here for the first time. Hazen hasn't been here since 2001. New Rockford Cheyenne doesn't have a title, and Divide County hasn't had one since 98. And then in the two late games, we've got rematches, totally different stories. Most, or if not all those kids were here before, as Grafton and Shanley have a rematch. Grafton won it last year, but Shanley won the regular season matchup. And then the late one, it's the Capital City battle again. Bismarck High versus Century. The Demons won the state title last season. They also won the regular season matchup this season. So those teams obviously very familiar with each other in the double and triple A game. In the A and nine man, well, looks like some new opponents and some uh, fresh faces. So it'll be nice to see a little new blood here in these first couple games, guys. Well, thank you very much, Scott. We look forward to your uh, comments and halftime uh, interviews with the coach. And Jamal, I think one of the things that's kind of interesting uh, is that, uh, you know, as the Sportscasters and Sports Writers Association, we kind of put the polls and we vote who we think is number one. And, mm -hmm. and, of course, everybody says that ah, they don't mean anything, which they don't. But people always pay attention to them. That's why we do it. And one of the things I think is interesting today is that three of our four games has the number one ranked team in the end of the regular season against number two. You usually don't see that. And like you said, people looking and go, well, the polls don't mean <laughs> much. And then this is kind of a situation we can point and go, well, we got it right this time. You know, you see those two best teams. You kind of like to see the cream of the crop rise to the top. And that's what you have this time. You see great games all across the board and a lot of one versus two matchups. Yeah, in our Class A contest, if you're wondering where's number one there, that was Stanley Powers Lake. Well, Hazen took care of Stanley Powers Lake. That happened in the semifinal game, ending a 20, what, 22? or 23 game winning streak that the Blue Jays had so that's how uh, Hazen earned its way into this game from last week so so yes it's uh, it's always entertaining it's it's, it's teams especially in the uh, as Scott mentioned in these uh, nine man and class eight classes that don't always meet during the regular season so your first time here you know you get a few scouting reports you watch a little bit of tape and then you just kind of see what happens and then you hope that the nerves don't take over too bad because like I said some of these kids haven't been here before some of the coaches haven't had to handle this type of pressure everyone's excited to be here though so that should make it a great atmosphere it certainly is early to be playing a playing a football game but Tom Nesvold the head coach for the the Sioux said hey I'm just 
telling our, our kids that it's not really 9 o'clock, it's 10 o'clock because of the daylight savings time. And so, <laughs> hey, we're, we're, you're used to being up and being in class. Whatever works. Okay. It's time for a public address announcer and today's national anthem. by American Bank Center, member FDIC, your source for banking, investments, trust, and insurance. It's the Bison against the Sioux when we come back. He's in at 9 and 2, located in Cold Country, about an hour and 15 minutes northwest of Bismarck. West Hope, uh, Newburgh, Glenburn, up in the Minot area, a co op in the fourth year of this three town co op. You see them coming in at 8 and 4, so the Sioux hot at the right time. And how they got here, well, it was West Hope, uh, Newburgh, Glenburn. 28 points down to Linton HMB in the opening game. Came back to win that. Beat Miller North Sargent and then had a very good game against Langdon Munich in the semifinals. Uh, Berthold R. Redeemers is the way Hazen got here. Uh, defeated Hart River who beat Hazen during the regular season and then uh, shut out Stanley Powers Lake, a dynamic, uh, powerful team and the number one ranked team to get here. So here we go. We are underway with the Dakota Bowl and the opening kickoff will come down to the Bison at about the 18-yard line. Pretty good return going, and that is Hunter Steffen on the wide side, and the Hazen offense will get it started. That's the way you want to start. You have a nice return. Didn't have to do too much. Great field position, so it should be perfect setup for the offense. Stetson Carr will lead this offense in the starting lineups, which are brought to you by College Planning Center of Bank of North Dakota. And up front, it's Hintz and Kryle Hill, Seaslack and Moss. Very good on that side of the offensive line. Summer, Dahl, Briar Borneman has uh, really been good in terms of chewing up yards. Dominic Opp in the backfield as well. And the quarterback there, you see him, a two-time All-Stater already, Stetson Carr with over 1,000 yards passing and over 13 yards rushing, the leading rusher on the team. And that's why there's Carr big on the far side. The first play of the game is going to go huge all the way down to about the 32-yard line. That, Jamal, is what Carr's been doing all year long. Off the get-go, you see why he's two-time All-State. Everybody out there hasn't, get, hasn't had a chance to see this kid play. Takes the read option, gone to the outside, shows nice speed, able to get out of bounds with a big-time pickup. So Carr and the Bison down already into the Sioux territory. Lights to the right of Carr, Borneman to the left. And Borneman will have his first carry trying to bounce to the outside. Borneman with a first down. Borneman tripped up at the 15, otherwise he was going in. Back-to-back -back running plays, and they were back-to-back -back big ones for the Bison. Hazen's coming out very fired up, and you see see what type of running back Borneman is. He's a complete back. He's got the total package, balance, powered speed. Uh, the two Hancocks will be in the starting lineup. They are twins along with Shep and uh, Karinta with Hermes Smetty and Broughton at your linebackers. Secondary, Simpson and Solaway at the corners with Conway and Miller at the safeties. Those starting lineups have been brought to you by College Planning Center at Bank of North Dakota. 
Well, two rushing plays. Hazen all the way down to the 15-yard line. This is the similar look. This time it's a double-wide look. And Carr will hand it off up the middle. And here's Borneman. Borneman will make it into the end zone as he puts his shoulder down at the goal line. Three rushing plays, and Hazen is into the end zone. And Briar Borneman scores it. That's his 15th rushing touchdown of the year. And that is a bunch when you consider he missed the first five games of the season. Definitely, and he scores them in bunches. He gets multiple touchdowns in the games. Like you said, he missed a bunch of time. You see what type of physical back he is. Earlier, you saw the speed. Here, you see him lower the shoulder, getting into the end zone. Great play. I don't think Hazen could have started any better. Three plays, they're already up 6-0. So, Br Briar Borneman, the junior, 5'7", 155. You saw him be a little physical as well. He plays a lot bigger than what the, uh, the pounds are beside his name. Hunter Fears will try to tack on the extra points. And he does not. So, Hazen takes the lead, 6 to nothing. And boy, uh, Jamal, you can't start any better than that. Not at all. You come out, you line up, big play right off the bat, another big play, then you're in the end zone before the other team knows what hit you. I don't know if Hazen had that in mind when they started, but right now I get, they got to be feeling good. This is the best start they could hope for. Well, you you saw when we you know talked about the the road to the Dakota Bowl here a couple of a couple of those games where you know uh, Stetson Carr and and. And company put up, you know, 50 points against Berthold and put up 41 against Hart River. And Hart River at the time was rated number three. So Hazen to to get here, you know, beat the number one ranked team and the number three ranked team. And so uh, that's some pretty good stuff there. Three plays and 66 yards. And of course, it did not take long at all. And you, you mentioned the offense. The offense moves very well. The defense is something I'm interested in seeing right now. They played very well. Come off that shutout win, 14 nothing over depend, defending champ Stanley Powers Lake. So that's a huge game. So now we get to see what the Hazen defense looks like and what the uh, West Hope Newburgh Glenburn offense looks like. Well, it's certainly, you know, we've had a small sample size, but judging <laughs> by the first three plays we saw, this Sioux offense looks like uh, it's going to need to score some points today. Definitely. I mean, but this this isn't anything new for them. In the playoffs, they've trailed in all three games. Yeah, and that's so, strange, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. So this is, ironically enough, familiar position for them. But they're a resilient group, so I got a feeling they'll be bouncing back. It looks like it's Broughton back deep in the middle. He's their quarterback. He does have a 70-yarder, and it looks like Hazen kicks away from him. So it'll be a decent starting position for the Sioux right at the 40-yard line. That was Soloway, Soloway. who uh, returned that kick. Perfect field position for the for the Sioux. Um, they don't, hopefully they don't have to do too much. Today's starting lineups brought to you by College Planning Center at Bank of North Dakota. Up front for West Hope Newburgh, we have Weeks, Shep, Hermes, Smetty, and Corinda. Corinda at the running back. Both of the Hancocks, Soloway, Chase Conway, and Miller. Two freshmen in the starting lineup for West Hope today. And it'll be Broughton on the first carry. He tries to bounce to the outside. A quarterback keeper is only going to gain one. And the edge was not given up on that particular play. Hunter Fears is in there on the tackle. Again, your defensive starting lineups now for Hazen. You just saw one of the guys make that play. Hunter Fears, number three. One of the four linebackers, along with Seaslack, a tackling machine. Demarcus Smith and Berger. Sanders, Moss, and Kryle up front. Dahl, Borneman, Stetson Carr, and Dominic Opp. As good of numbers as Carr has had offensively, he's been about that good or better on the defensive side. And again, those starting lineups brought to you by College Planning Center at Bank of North Dakota. Hunter Broughton, you saw his numbers at over 1,200 yards passing. He'll be his first pass if he can get it off. It's on a roll, and it's a good pass, short of a first down, but it is caught on the wide side by Ethan Miller, one of the tight ends, his 15th catch this year. And Broughton's a big running threat, too. You see he can throw for over 1,200 yards. I believe he's rushed for over 1,200 yards as well. Definitely a dual threat. Very versatile athlete. Should be fun to see him getting on the edge, what type of plays he can make today. Not at all uh, surprising to see, like in Class A or, or in Nine Man, where the, your quarterback is that dual threat and, and has a ton of yards on each side. Yep, yep. Empty backfield. Three receivers set. And it's a first down for Broughton as he just followed the right side. Smitty and Corinta on the right side of that offensive line. When you ask Tom Nesvold about his offensive line, he says, hey, Corinta 
Number 55's kind of been our leader up there. There you see him right in the middle of your screen. And he's a big fella too, so I mean, why not? Follow the big guy and 265, 6'5", 265, and follow him to the first down. Setting up on that right side with Smetty off, off to him. Logan Hermes again is the center. High backfield with the brothers, the twins, and here's the first handoff, and that goes nowhere for Cody. Michael Moss, among others there. Looked like Nate Lentz got in there as well, stuff in the, stuff in the run. Boy, Moss has been, has been a beast in the middle, plays the nose guard, senior, 252 pounds. This Hazen team is a relatively young team. In fact, last year was the year Hazen thought that they would get to this game. They were senior, loaded with seniors. They came back and obviously have a bunch of talent. On the handoff near side, Cody, nothing there. It was second down and 11. And he got back to the line of scrimmage, and it'll be the first third and long, as you see Fears, the second leading tackler for Hazen in on that play. And definitely comes up, makes a lot of plays from the linebacker position, Fears, and you saw him come in and fill the hole there. But Bison are stuffing the run pretty well. We're going to see how it will be interesting to see what the Sioux can do to counter that. And now you're going on third and long. You're going to see him pass the ball here. We'll see what the vertical game looks like. That's Miller going wide to the left. That's the top of your screen. Cody in the slot. Broughton straight back, looks near side, has it complete to his freshman, Conway. Chase's 16th catch of the year will pick up a first down on third and long. Nice play. Great touch on the ball. You saw him fall back in the soft zone, and he's going to loft it just over the coverage right into his receiver's hands. Great timing play, great touch on the ball. Really nice throw. So the opening drive continues to be a good one for the Sioux. Not many ninth graders in the starting lineup for the four teams today, but we mentioned two of them. Weeks and Conway are both freshmen. Little swing pass, and it is behind Cody. And that will be marked right there at the 43-yard line because that was a lateral. Got to keep in mind, that's a live ball. So if it's incomplete, you got to get to it and cover it up in a hurry. I don't know if you realize if that was a fumble or not, but heads up play. It looked like the uh, looked like the Sioux tried to, or excuse me, looked like the Bison tried to get over there and scoop that one up. So it'll be a loss going all the way back to about the 43-yard line. Second down, 15 yards. Looking like a passing situation for Broughton, and it is. Hunter looking. He is being followed hard, gets the pass away, but there were some green jerseys all around him, and that pass was intended for Tyler Simpson, a senior. That play blew up in a hurry. They got great penetration. You see, they've been getting a push up front so far this whole drive. They've stuffed the run, and now they're getting after him when he drops back to pass. So this front four is really playing well. Well, for the second time in a row, it's third in long for WNG. Picked up the last one with a pass to Conway. Let's see what Tom Nesfold and his coaching staff come up with here. Inside handoff, ball on the turf. It's still loose. It's going nowhere. Still, and now they're calling it down, even though the ball squirted away at midfield. It was an inside handoff intended for Conway, the tight end, and that uh, exchange just didn't seem to happen, did it? No, it wasn't very clean. Kind of bobbled it, but then, you know, give credit to Seth Pryor. He got in there. He blew that play up very well and kind of forced the issue a little bit. You see the white hat coming in there to, to mark it, the play dead. So it's fourth down, punting situation. Borneman, very, very dangerous in that regard. He is back. He's averaging over 25 yards of punt return. Let's see what he does here. Punt kind of hangs up. Nice punt there. No return as it will be touched dead at the 21-yard line. So Hazen will have its second possession when we come back. We're just getting started. Dakota Bowl 2012 here on NBC North Dakota Sports.
The officiating crew, uh, uh, many of these guys are based out of the Valley City area. Todd Christensen, Brian Janish, Kirk Olson, Tyler Van der Bruggen, and Van Bruggen, and Dave Carlsrud, who used to work at the Activities Association, working this game. Second possession for Hazen. First one could not have gone any better. Carr on a keeper, our first flag of the day. Stetson bounces it outside, cuts it up. This looks like it is a big gainer all the way up to the 47. But Jamal, I have a feeling it's not going to stand. When you see that flag right there in the backfield, it's usually not a good thing for the offense. Illegal motion, this one's coming back. Even though the play doesn't work, or, or doesn't stand, as you, as, you, as you said, it still worked. <laughs> Definitely. And you know, that's something that you could think they might go back to a little bit later in the game. Maybe right here, honestly, as long as the play works, you see the penalty, the coach is going to keep that one in their back pocket. Green. It'll be a first down and 15. Here you see Coach uh, Fillion along the sideline getting a little bit of an explanation on what we did wrong with the, the Hazen buys. And one of the things you said is it's going to be interesting, even though UND is not the Sioux anymore, <laughs> but to have the Bison have the green the green jerseys in this game. And that's already tripped me up once. Like I said, you look out there and you get ready to say bison, but the bison are in the green and white. You got the Sioux rock and the maroon and gold. Yeah. So got to make sure we stay in our game here today. Yeah, we, we don't have to worry about uh, uh, bison until tomorrow, I guess, because we'll uh, pack everything up tonight after we're all done, head down to Fargo for the Fargo Dome in that big game uh, tomorrow with uh, NDSU hosting South Dakota State, the two teams leading the Valley Conference. Big game for the Dakota marker and you know, the winner of that game is in the driver's seat to win the Valley, so that'll be an exciting game tomorrow as well. Well, the first penalty, you know, it only goes down in, as a five-yarder, but if you if you count 50 back to the 18, <laughs> it ends up uh, being a, a big uh, reversal for Hazen as Borneman tries to pop it back outside. He does, showing some pretty good hips, trying to stay on his feet. And uh, that's a lot of work for about a four-yard gain, but Borneman does not go down easy. Shows great balance. Sometimes you got to know when to, when to hit the deck and get down and try not to make too much happen, but I think he got his helmet ripped off on that one, so it might have a face mask penalty here. Farmers Union Insurance Instant Replay. Breyer, I mentioned uh, off the top or earlier that he did uh, miss the first five games of the season, so when you figure out that he has... There's a flag on the play, by the way, but he has over 800 yards rushing, you know, and mm -hmm. 14 now, 15 touchdowns. That's pretty good work. Definitely, definitely. And like I said, he's a, a great back. You, you see the first down. You see the strength. You see the balance. And you saw the speed on the on the first drive. You saw once he gets to the outside, what he can do. He's able to lower the shoulder, get into the end zone. He's an all-around back. So going forward, I'm sure they'll be feeding him. The penalty on the play was a personal foul face mask, so it will move the ball all the way up to the 36-yard line, and it will be a first down for Stetson Carr and company. Getting all that yardage back after they had the first bust yep. player on the penalty, so should, looks like it didn't hurt him too bad. Yeah, Rick Fillion in his 10th year as the head coach at Hazen just simply says, number seven, Stetson Carr, one of the best players that we've ever had here. And there's Carr directing the offense. And he will keep it on the read option. Carr with a first down and more. He's across midfield and finally gets corralled at about the 45 of the Sioux. And uh, I think it was Smetty that made the tackle, but another first down. And Hazen has found something they like in the running game. Great vision, and that read option seems to be there for Stetson Carr, and he's able to make that decision every time. You see, like you said, he is a two-time state champion. You trust that he's going to, two-time all-state, all rather. You're going to trust he's going to make the right decision here in these plays. Even though it's his first time in the state championship game, he's playing up to the moment right now. Well, they mark it at the 44. Stetson has a brother, Bailey, on the roster uh, here at UND playing safety. Seaslack and Moss getting it done on the inside, and they go their side again. And this time, Borman with another first down. He's up to the 30 with a little stop and go, and he's going to stop there at the 30. A late flag comes flying in as well, and I think we got another face mask. Another face mask, and I was thinking he, he doesn't want to go out of bounds. He's looking for contact. He's not worried about going out of bounds, and he makes something happen, picks up a face mask, more free yards. And there is a flag at the end. Yep, 15-yarder. Yep. 
Plus, so. watch the end of the play, and when you're talking about Jamal, the way he jukes and jives, you, you're just trying to grab anything, so it's not unusual probably to get a hand on a face mask. No, I, you know, the Sioux are just, like you said, reaching out, trying to grab some jersey, trying to get whatever they can on the guy, and he's so shifty <laughs> that, you know, twice on this drive, they've reached out, they've got a handful of helmets. So 30 yards of this drive so far. Penalty yards were up to the 17. And just like that, Hazen's back in the red zone again. Lines in the backfield. It's a wing set up now for Borneman. And Carr hands to Borneman. Running the right side. Busting forward, still on his feet inside the five. No, they'll mark him out at the six. Unbelievable balance. I lost count of how many tackles he broke there. Great job staying on his feet, making something happen. But you can see why Hazen's objective on the offense is to get number one in some space. And he's giving the Sioux fits in space. And you know, like they've already picked up the personal foul penalties with the face mask, and now he's making a miss, and he's a very shifty back. Now we're first and goal from the six-yard line. The first touchdown was a 15-yard run by Borneman. Lines, the fullback, will lead the way for Borneman again. This time he's corralled in the backfield, and WNG with some pretty good penetration. I think Broughton was one of the guys that got back through there first. The Sioux defense needs a play like that. They've been getting beat to the edge, and you're going to try to go up the middle. They have to be physical there. As, as you saw, they plugged the middle very well. Second down now, five yards away from the end zone. Car from the pistol. And he'll keep it. Car up the middle, five yard touchdown. Hazen's two for two in drives. Making the read option look easy, running it to perfection, reads the defensive line, keeps it himself right up the gut. Yet another touchdown. That's going to put him up 12 0. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good hole right in the middle. Oh, that, yeah. That deep, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's easy to make a read when you can see the, the C parting in front of you and the offensive line opens up a gap like that one. Going for two after missing the kick on the first one. The two-point conversion, it goes from the three. And Carr will try it now. Now he'll pitch to Borneman. And yes, the nice little play there by Carr. So the two-point works. Carr was corralled. He knew Borneman was there. And we're now 14 to nothing, Hazen. Great awareness by Carr. Kept in himself, tried to make something happen. Wasn't there. Knew he had the running back still there with the option to pitch it. Gets stuck in traffic. Pitches it back, pick up the two-point conversion. There you see him keeping it touchdown. on the way to the touchdown. Now they're up 14 to nothing. Stetson Carr's two offensive drives have been good ones. In his career as the quarterback, I mean, coming into this game, <laughs> you know, almost 34 yards, 100 yards rushing, almost 3,000 yards passing, and now I think he has 71 career touchdowns. That's pretty good stuff in three years. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you really can't do much better than that. <laughs> pretty pretty good stuff is, is right. That, yeah. That's amazing stats. And here, like I said, everybody out there gets to see what he's been doing in his high school career. Six plays, 83 yards. The first uh, touchdown drive was 66. This one didn't take long, 222, but longer than the 42nd was, one they had right off the was, bat. By comparison, it felt like forever when the first one they scored in 40 seconds. But the ball control offense is there. You see, they don't really need to throw the ball. They get themselves in first and second manageable. They haven't been third long yet, so the offense is rolling. Keeping it low. Looks like it, well, it, the ball was headed out of bounds, and then it's still a live ball now. Now it's back to Broughton, the guy that Hazen was trying to avoid, and then Broughton slips down at the 20. So we got to get on that. That's a live ball on the kickoff. You thought it was going to go out of bounds. It died perfectly. It seemed right there around the 20-yard line. Hopped on it pretty quickly. Uh, Broughton in the offense back out now. You know, the Sioux with an 8-4 and four record. At one point in the year, eight games in, WNG was 4-4. Was four and four. 
than it won their last game of the regular season and of course the first three here of the playoffs so obviously it took a little while for this group to come together as a team but when it did it certainly has been good and you saw with the with their playoff run so far looking back to pass here here's Broughton with the throw to the far wide side that is Ethan Miller Miller got about half the distance needed for the first down and you saw with their playoff run how they've been able to gel as a team with the come from behind wins that they've had you know they come together they play for each other they play very well they've got tons of heart so it's a, no matter what the score is they're going to come out here they're going to play hard until the final whistle blows little square out little out five yard out pattern there to Miller there's Miller going wide once again he big, is a junior big target at 6 4 you got a feeling that they're going to take a shot with him a little bit down the field on some vertical routes later on Rotten looking to pass once again and he'll tuck it try to get what he can muscles his way near the first down marker needs to get to the 30 really close to this one that's a, a good effort at the at the end of that run by Hunter Broughton you got to keep your eye on him at all times even when he drops back to pass he you know he's a threat to run you can't just assume he's going to run we say he throws for over 1200 yards this year he's got the arm so he's going to be able to hurt you in a lot of ways and that extra effort from Hunter at the end of that run did pick up the first down this is the first quarter of our first game today here at the Dakota Bowl 404 you can see on the top of your screen to go in our first quarter so it is a first and 10. Empty backfield again. Now Cody will motion in. Broughton will run it. He gets banged around, picks up two or three. A couple of yards in the design draw. But the Sewer are going to have to avoid it. These third and longs to play them in their first drive. They did convert a couple of third downs on their first drive, but you want to stay away from these second and longs and third and longs, getting to some more manageable situations. Smith, the first one to get there. Third and seven. Yes. Stepping up and incomplete as Borneman makes the defensive play on the intended pass to Ethan Miller. Good protection by the offensive line, but better defense by Hazen as the secondary and the linebackers were in the perfect position to make a play. Had a chance, but Borneman took it away. It's a great play. Borneman had an interception last week against Stanley Powers Lake. Shutting out Stanley Powers Lake. Boy, that was something. I think that, that raised a lot of eyebrows around the state. They got a little help. In the opening drive, the Blue Jays were marching deep into Hazen's own zone and then a, a, a turnover at that point kept him out. Third down and seven now. Broughton will try to run for it and he picks it up again. Oh. With space at midfield, the ball is loose. It looks like the sewer, the closest one's there and WNG covers it up, gets the break after the nice run from Broughton. Dodge the bullet, Broughton with some very nice moves, gets himself out into space, makes a lot happen. Fortunately, puts the ball on the turf, but like you just said, Sue with the awareness to fall on that one. They get the first down, moving the ball down the field. Who punched that one out? Borum? No, not. No, was it a. To tell you the truth on that replay, I didn't see it. We'll, t we'll see if we can here. Here's Broughton again. Uh, Might have been Borman. Yeah. See if number, number, one. number one comes in. Yep. yep, you're right. He's making plays happen. On first down now from the 44, lobs a pass a little bit too high, incomplete. That pass intended for Burnson. Lane, a senior, number 26, has seven catches this year. Second down coming. Connor Dahl on the coverage. Connor led his team in. The defensive category called knockdown. <laughs> loves getting to the quarterback, loves making things happen, yeah. loves, uh, loves putting somebody on the ground. Inside to the near side, Soloway. Here comes a flag. Carr comes up and makes the tackle. Flag on the play, lost a couple on it. 
that play got blown up right away. There wasn't much inside. They tried to run it, but there was penetration from the tackles. There wasn't much there. Another flag on the play. Looks like holding. Farmers Union insurance replay. See if we can pick up the hold. A little block in the back, back there. Could be. Nice tackle. Well, a car has been outstanding. Leads the team in tackles. And you mentioned that. You're going to see a lot of that. Class A where the quarterback is also a big-time right. playmaker on defense. And the running backs are a free-range linebacker. A lot of big-time two-way players at Class A and a nine-man. If they caught the block in the back, that was the call. It's actually administered, if I'm not mistaken, like a hold on the high school side where it's 10 yards from the spot. Second down and a long way. <laughs> <laughs> the first down markers all the way at the Hazen 35. The ball from their own 43. Broughton looking to try to get a screen set up. The pass is complete to Carly Hancock, but he lost yards on the play, and the Hazen defense uh, continues to look good. But what a story right there, number 30, Carly Hancock. Yeah, Carly Hancock, his coach, Tom Nesfold, says he's the heart of the team. He's suffering from fibromyalgia, chronic muscle pain, and he's had that for the last two years. He's playing through pain that his coach says just isn't normal, so his teammates are you know, rallying behind him, and he's definitely an inspiration to his team. And there's... One of the two senior twins. And, and Coach Nesfold said, well, at least they're not identical twins. Thank God on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're third down in a mile. Pass oh. incomplete. So a punt is coming. And after that really nice run from Broughton and then the fortunate break for the Sioux to recover the fumble, it was nothing but backwards from that point on for WNG, thanks to uh, Borneman and company on the defensive uh, Defensive stand, I guess you'd call it. Yep, you kind of hate to see that from the Sioux. They put themselves in a great position. They got a nice long run, starting to feel some momentum on the offensive side of the ball. You have the fumble, then you got the penalty, then you know, a negative yardage play. So going backwards, but they've got to figure out a way to sustain their offensive drives. I know Broughton has done a lot of the punting this year, but here is Carly with the punt. Fair catch made at the 28 by Borneman, and that has to has to kill that kid not to be able to run, <laughs> not to be able to run it. Yeah, you know he's trying to make something happen. That was a great punt, though. Carly does it all. Now this will be the third possession for Hazen. The first two, well, ended up in the end zone. 40 seconds and was it two minutes, 22 seconds? 222, yeah. Well, watch out, they can break the long play at any time. The read option, they've been running that very well for big yardage. I wouldn't surprise me to see it over and over and over again on this drive. And to be totally honest, Hazen's had no reason to even think about passing yet. Exactly. Have they? Exactly. I don't. I don't think I've seen the attempt, and there really is no need as long as your bread and butter's working. Fake to Op, hand off to Borneman. He jumps over a couple. Ooh. Takes a really nice shot, Ooh. and Borneman is going to get up and readjust his chin strap, shake his head because he got drilled at the end of this run. You got to buckle that up tight. This is a big time hit coming here. Breaks a couple of tackles again. Number one just lowers the shoulder. Yep. That's one of the Hancock yep. twins. Cody Hancock, the senior. And that'll bring Borneman to the sideline in a couple of, are you right? <laughs> you know what day it is? Do you know where yeah. you are? Oof. Hope he's all right. And no matter what he says, that picture probably is more of an indication of how he feels, and no doubt about that. Exactly. Now Carr will keep it, follow his blockers, and pick up a first down and a second down play with uh, four to go as we're inside the final minute of the first. So if Breyer can't go, then obviously Carr probably will become your primary runner because, well, he leads him in that category anyway. And you've seen what type of runs he's capable of. He reads the, the option very well. Like I said, he gets the outside. He can take it up the middle. Offensive line has been opening holes, so I'm, I'm sure he has no problem toting the load. Yeah, Carr's got 23 touchdowns this year, combined passing and rushing. So the clock starts now after the chain is set. Let's see what Carr does here on a first and 10. And he passes it for the first time, and it's caught by Ock up to the Sioux 41-yard line. And 
that is the catch there for Dominic Opp, his eighth catch of the year. He's averaging 22 yards of reception coming in, so when he catches it, it's usually a big play. He's always moving the chains, and he gets open down the seam there for the big-time play. So there's that first pass that we talked about. And I think that has a direct reflection of number one not being in for that particular play. Exactly. Looks like he's still trying to gather himself over there. First and 10 from the 41 now for Carr. Reverse near side. It's Ops carry. Op with big yards again. And he's inside the 20. It's red zone time again for the team in green. Dominic Op. 27 carries on the year. Now that was his biggest run of the year. He had 129 yards total, and he picked up a bunch right there. Well, the wide receivers are definitely getting out there, blocking down the field. And Austin Selak pulling, coming around, leading the way down the field, big time block there. That's key in what these big outside runs are all about. They're getting great perimeter blocking. Well, that'll do it for the first quarter. Hazen is driving again. And they have been into the end zone twice. It's 14 to nothing on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard. First quarter of the Class A title game. Yeah, guys, uh, I was watching on the sidelines as Briar Bornerman came over. He took his helmet off, kind of knelt down. Uh, the coaches, assistant coaches came over, talked to him. Some of the players were talking to him. He was taking some water. He's nodding his head yes the whole time. Seemed to kind of be aware of what was going on. There were no uh, medical professionals checking on him. So it seemed like he was all right. He got up after that big run from um, Op and headed down towards the sidelines, threw his helmet back on. So it looks like there's a, a pretty good chance we'll see Briar Bornerman back in this game. Well, Scott, he's back, right back in on this play. So... Uh, Borneman is back in. Hazen from the 18-yard line. Here is a reverse. This goes to Stefan. Stefan to the 10 where he is tackled at about the 8. So this should be a first down. I tell you, this running game is, is just, it, it's gaining huge chunks of yardage. And they're so quick to the edge. That, that's the thing. The Bison are getting the ball to their skill players, getting them out in space, letting them run into rounds and jet sweeps, and they're so fast to the edge. That's giving the Sioux fits right now. Steffen's 46th carry right there of this year. He does have one touchdown, averaging over six yards a carry. So we're back to a first and goal situation. That's Lines alongside, but it'll be Borman with a carry. He has to kind of bubble it a little bit further outside. And this looks like another face mask. That's the third one that he's drawn, so. And Borman's uh, helmet comes off again. Farmers Union Insurance replay. He's taking a beating today, but I guarantee he told his coach, you know, played my whole career trying to get to the state title game. He's only a junior. There's no way you're keeping me out of this game. He gets out there, first carry back, makes something happen. There was actually, it looked like two different Sioux players had the hand on his headgear. And it's, it's, you said this earlier, but every time he touched the ball, you see it. They're just they're reaching out, trying to grab anything that they can. When I was talking with Rick, uh, Philly and earlier this week uh, the line he had to describe uh, Borneman I thought was most interesting thing he says he goes he's dynamic yeah he's a uh, he's a touchdown just waiting to happen <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can see it when he touches the ball if you're not careful he's gonna break one so the penalty moves the ball half the distance up to the uh, moved it not quite half the distance it's up to the five and Carr has it. No, Borneman does. It doesn't matter. It's into the end zone. That's the third touchdown. Borneman's second of the game. His second uh, TD. This one from five. The last one came from five, and it came from Carr. And it's three drives, three touchdowns by Hazel. And the personal foul set up touchdowns on all three drives. You see that one, like I said, didn't move the ball that far, but definitely gave him free yardage. Another touchdown for the big fella. Early second quarter. Fears will come back in to kick it now. This one looks much better off his toe than the first one did. And make it 21 to nothing. We talked earlier about how uh, West Hope Newburgh Glenburn has been down in all three playoff games. They have come back in all three playoff games. They've outscored their opponents 60 to 6 in the second half in these playoffs. And right now, they're over there talking to each other. They've been here before. 
But this might be too big of a mountain to overcome. You know they're going to try, obviously. Okay. They're, they're not going to quit, but this is a yep. tough task to come back from. Yeah, it, it's you, uh, you hesitate to say that's the recipe for success, but it, it has been the common theme throughout the, throughout the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, again, the, right off the bat, down in Linton uh, against Linton HMB, down by 28 points. And uh, by halftime, though, I think it was 28 to 21. So mm -hmm. so when you're down by three scores now, if you're the team in white, you need to be putting some points on the board. You need, you need some momentum. You need to create a turnover. Hopefully you get a kick return here, something like that. The team needs a spark, anything they can get going. But like you said, they, they've been in this position before. They're going to continue to fight, but they've got to start getting something going. Longest scoring drive of the day for Hazen, two and a half minutes, 236. <laughs> Bornemann's touchdown was the seventh play so but look at that you're averaging 10 over 10 yards a play and they move it down so quick like I said a long drive for them is two and a half minutes so seven plays 72 yards made it look very easy. Borneman lined up to kick it off and there's Broughton the guy that the Sioux would like to see return it if possible he does have a 70 yarder for a touchdown this year. Trying to kick it away from him so far. This one down the middle. Nope, it's to the near side, and that's to Cody Hancock. Oh. A return right, picked up one decent block, jumps his way to the 40, and it's uh, the best starting position for WNG today. And that's the kind of spark that they needed. Set up his blocks, got out to the 40, trying to get his teammates hype over there on the sideline. Hopefully they follow suit. Well, I think the one thing that has been established so far in our quarter in a few minutes is that physically up front it is uh, right now it's very obvious that the team in green is uh, winning what is always the most important battle in football the bison offensive line is definitely winning the battle as Hazen's controlling the running game to see them opening up holes in the offensive line the defensive line right there on cue plugging up the run stopping things right away before they even get started tried to give it to Carly Hancock he weighs 235 far and away the biggest of the of the running running backs for WNG and he went nowhere I mean Moss and and everybody else up front I mean Moss has been so good at nose and when you, you're when you're playing a you know a version of a 3-4 and your nose guard is as good as he is boy everybody else's job it looks a lot easier and that's exactly what happened on that play I mean Hancock at 240 is a huge guy but when you got all the help in the world to make the tackle it makes things a little bit easier no gain on first Broughton will have to throw for it he's going deep it flutters a little bit and it's picked off interception by Nate Lines. and two plays into this drive Hazen has the ball right back Lines, one of the linebackers that's his first interception this year Tried to take the deep shot. Try, looks like they tried to get it all back right away. It wasn't there. It throws it into double coverage. Great break on the ball by Lines, able to make the catch. But yeah, I don't. I don't think this is a ball that should have been thrown. I mean, obviously he thought he had a man. Ball kind of died on him in the air a little bit, but you know, that was very tight coverage. Yeah. Well, when the when the, when the spiral left the ball in midair, it looked like it stayed back toward the middle. And it'll allow number 33 right there, the fullback now, to make a play defensively. So this drive for Hazen will start where? At their own 26-yard line. And Borneman with the handoff. He runs through one tackle and then runs a long way. Broughton hauls him down, but not until he's up to the 48-yard line. And another what, almost 20-yard gain. It's an 18-yard gain for Borneman. It's tough to flip the field just like that. You get the pick. You think they're kind of back in their own territory and then boom big time run 20 yard gain now you're out near midfield you got a lot more space to work with and every time he touches the ball he's picking up big yardage today yeah you saw it there in the farmers union insurance instant replay well Breyer certainly looks uh, fine he's almost to 100 yards already 10 carries 95 yards and he does have those two touchdowns whoa whoa well we did <laughs> See Slack move or not? Devin Carinta thinks he did. I don't think he did. Nope. Defensive line jumped. Oh. See Slack's a little pumped about it. Sorry, Devin. The white. Encroachment. White. Five yards remains first down. The guys in stripes didn't see it your way. A little bit of frustration possibly there, trying to get a 
you know, jump on the count, trying to make something happen, but uh, no three yards. I mean, he's used to being in the in the backfield. He, I think, he leads the team, but tied for the lead with uh, 13 tackles for loss. So he's used to being able to bust through there. You know, he's trying to make it happen again. You know, he's a big guy, but just can't make anything happen so far today. First down and five now. Back into WNG territory. Borneman again. Looking for the one block. He did find it from Cislack, I think. Borneman still on his feet. And look at him hustle his way all the way to the 29. And there's another carry of about 19 yards. So Borneman, boy, he's getting the block that he needs at the line. It was Michael Moss that threw it here. And then he's been doing the rest himself. For a guy that's listed as 160 pounds, he never thinks about going down, never thinks about going out of bounds looking for contact he's finishing his runs keeping his feet moving through contact he's playing very physical today it's, it's the reason he's averaging almost 10 yards a carry well he surged over the 100 yard rushing mark already in this game and we've got nine minutes to go before half oh my goodness Carr hasn't had to do much of the work yet offensively it's that read option to Borneman that's been working this play though whistled before it started so someone in the neutral zone Offense. Uh, false start, maybe? <laughs> well, might have lined up wrong. Got a dead ball. Encroachment. White remains first down. Yeah, in high school they'll blow that, they'll blow that dead and, and you don't get to snap it if you're if you take if you take the tip of each of the footballs in an imaginary line that extends all the way to each end zone, if any player has their any part of their 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 hand your head can be over it but your hand can't if your hands in that little what they call the neutral zone it's an automatic flag and you don't get to run the play so it drops the ball back to the 34 I think what cars only attempted one pass or needed to so far mm -hmm. Borneman to his left oh there's the play that's work Borneman finds a little seam up front we see a flag I'm gonna guess the holding territory I'm moving back again and this drive Hazen stopping itself with a couple of penalties. But this is the type of thing that, that the Sioux need. I mean, they've, they've been trying, like I said, the effort's there. You can't knock that. The effort's definitely there. But in terms of momentum, they have to try to create more big plays. Or in, this can, in this case, hope the Hazen starts beating themselves. And that's what they're definitely doing on this drive, moving themselves further and further away from scoring position. The penalty is marked from the spot of the foul. So that's why even though it is a technically a 10 yard penalty, you don't lose 10, you lose from the spot. The foul was called at the 32, so now we're back to the 42. But it is first down. And long. First and 23. Let's see if Carl want to put it up here. He'll send on motion to empties, fake to the right, looking back left. Carr still looking deep. Can Borneman make a play on the ball? He does. Keeps himself and his feet inbounds. He's up to the, what, the 16-yard line. Who else would it be? I mean, <laughs> first and 23, you need a big play. The original play wasn't there. You saw him pump fake. He looked left. The receiver's not there. Great defensive pressure by the Sioux. They burst through the line, but... Carr just makes something happen again. That's a tough throw, too, across his body like that. Mm -hmm. Borneman dragging the toes. Well, first and 23. Yeah, no problem. We'll pick up 27. <laughs> Man. And now, like, like you were talking, Jamal, you know, uh, WNG's thinking, hey, maybe we stopped a little momentum. One play later, we're back into the red zone. Exactly, and that, that's the heartbreaker. You're thinking you got something going on defense, starting to build a little confidence and give up a big play right away. Borneman to Carr's right. Option play near side. The pitch to Borneman. He's looking for the block. He's got a pretty good block downfield. Muscles and dives his way to the two. Excellent block on the on the wide side. Who was that? That was Car Dahl, I Connor think. Connor Dahl, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's the type of blocking they've been getting on the edge, on the perimeter, the wide receivers, and even the linemen who are pulling. They're getting great blocking the entire first half out there on the edge. And you saw him hold this block and sustain it. Way to keep his feet moving. That's a great block. That's a perfect uh, replay of it there. 
brought to you by Farmers Union Insurance. Let's see another look. Perfect pitch. Good stiff arm. Sound fundamental football. Well, Borneman has two touchdowns. Carr has one sandwiched in between those two. Let's see what Hazen does here on first and goal. Carr touchdown. They're calling it a three-yarder. But Hazen's back on the board. So it was Borneman, then Carr, then Borneman, and now Carr again. And it's 27 to nothing. And just like that, like we mentioned, you thought you had to stop a couple big time plays. There's a penalty on the play, though. Flag on this one. And it's unsportsmanlike. So the touchdown certainly stays on the board. Let's see if we can see what the penalty is here. And nothing there, anyway. No, nope, don't see anything there. There's multiple flags down the field right now, though, so the refs she, are talking something over. Well, you see C-Slack getting in there. Boy, the right side of the Hazen offensive line has been outstanding. All game long. They're probably the reason why you don't need to pass the ball at all. Mm -hmm. Just keep running that side. Now Carr's getting the explanation, and there's obviously choices, <laughs> choices <laughs> to make on this. We have two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on White, both on number 55. He's ejected from the game. Uh oh. Wow. Ah. That's Devin Parenta, whose Dakota Bowl is over. And you hate to see that. I mean, you know, this isn't. He, he's. He's upset, obviously. You don't want to let your emotions get the best of you. You're down 27 nothing. You're trying to keep your head. You never want to see a kid make a mistake, hopefully something that wasn't malicious and in intent. But, uh, yeah, his, his day is done. Now the head referee will come over to, uh, to Coach Nesfold and explain uh, exactly what happened. Tom, in his 16th year as the head coach, there he is, 22 total years of coaching. Um, this is only the second year that WNG has been an 11 man program and next year the numbers will drop to where uh, it'll go back to nine man for the Sioux. Yep and then, and then it's an impressive run obviously if you've only been here for two years you make it to the title game you can hang your hat on that regardless of the outcome of the game before you go back to nine man. So it was a great run for them but uh, things are going the way they expected today I don't think. All the flags and all the discussion and all of that obviously has been worked out. And so the two penalties, which are both dead ball penalties, will move it half the distance to the goal twice. So now the ball is about a foot away from the goal line. And when you only got a foot to go, Going for it. You'll go for the two. I'm guessing Carr's going to sneak in on the right side. Let's just see what happens. Oh, oh. Straight ahead. Second and effort gets him in. The two point there. Didn't need much more than the foot, and that's all he got, but it's two more points, and it's 29 to nothing. Hazen is out in front and looking good in the Class A title game on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard, 29 zip. Well, we're looking at Devin Carinta right now and sending it down to Scott Westerberg. Scott? Yeah, guys, on the play before the touchdown, the one Briar Borneman got inside the five after the play, Stetson Carr and Devin Carinta kind of had to be separated there. The officials were telling them both to get back to their huddles. They have, had a lot of words for each other. Then after the touchdown, Carinta went back towards Carr and the huddle of Hazen. Yeah, you know, completely leaving his own team and going after them. The official then threw the flags there and removed Corintha from the game. So a couple different plays there. Those two were kind of exchanging words and, and had to be uh, separated from each other. All right, thank you, Scott. And of course, Corintha separated from the game, unfortunately for him. And as Jamal pointed out, is uh, his senior season. Uh, this kick will roll out of bounds from Starley 
summer. So it'll be a first down from the 35 for WNG, who offensively has had a few nice plays, but unable to sustain drives. They've thrown the ball well in the very first possession. They threw the ball well, but since then, things have stalled tremendously. They really haven't been able to get the ball going. They hurt themselves with you know, penalties and a couple of negative plays. A six play, 74 yard drive. Last touchdown drive took two minutes and 36 seconds exactly as well. well they're, doing, they're doing it quickly. Carr, they're gonna say a two yard touchdown run. Now WNG on the offensive side will be a quarterback keeper trying to bounce to the outside. Hauled down nicely by Op after a gain of about four. And now you see them trying to get to the edge. I mean, the Sioux are going to try something different here, and hopefully their speed can get something working as they try to get outside a little bit more. Well, I think for many of the you know reasons and people we've talked about uh, you know, with with Hazen being inside, you know, Kryle and Moss and you know Sanders on the defensive side, but uh, the in the interior part is not much there for WNG. No. So the no. edge is about the only way you can go. Broughton on the option. The He'll pitch. pitch it out. Cody has it now. We're first down and more. Oh! As Cody Hancock puts his shoulder down and gets into Hazen territory. Second big time physical play today by Cody Hancock. He saw him deliver the big hit on defense, and now he's going to deliver the big hit on offense. Takes the pitch, picks up as many yards as possible, and puts his shoulder down big time. Ooh. Gets up, has a little bit to say about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Summer, I think, who uh, threw himself in front of Hancock, but he did stop him. You can't say he didn't make the, he didn't make the play. He <laughs> true, did. True. He just didn't get the best of it. <laughs> well, from the 48, but a flag. Tell you, this first half has taken a while. It, it definitely has. Tons of penalties. Motion. Sue hurting themselves yet again. You get a big-time play. Like I said, your momentum's picking up. You're... Start feeling good and then set yourself back a couple of yards. But yeah, there's there's been hasn't exactly been a mistake free half of football. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but it does drop it back into WNG territory. They're 47. West Hope, Newburgh, Glenburn. Fourth year of this co-op on the football side. Broughton after the fake will try to set up the screen and he does. It's Cody Hancock looking for a block. He cuts past a couple of defenders and all the way up to about the 43. Good, great read. Hancock was outnumbered there. He looks up. He sees he's got three Bison defenders in front of him. Cuts it back inside. Nice vision. I like this move coming up right there. Yep. Slam on the brakes. Let him run by you. Pick up some more yards. Great cut. Need more plays like that. And I know that, like I said, they're, they're, they're trying to get to the outside, as you mentioned, because there's nothing in the middle. So the screen passes and the sweeps and the bubble screens wouldn't surprise me to see a lot more of that going forward. Ten-yard pickup on first down, second and five. On the option again, Cody's there. If the pitch is there, oh. but Rotten can't get him because he's tripped up and it looked like Son, uh, Sanders who made the trip. Nice tackle. Gets just enough of him to bring him down before he can make the pitch. Nice way to stop the option. Had real good spacing, too, I thought, on the option play, but Broughton just couldn't quite get to the edge. And yep, if he could have got rid of it, there was there was more yards to be had out there on the outside, but tackling just in time. Loss of a yard back to the 44. It's a third down play coming. Broughton throwing right, and it is caught, and it's a first down, and that's Soloway. Move the chains yet again. Nice throw, pitch and catch on the sideline. Nice out route. Soloway's long this year was a 55-yarder. This one picks up about, about eight or nine yards up to the 36. Just enough to move the chains. That's all you need, get a fresh set of downs, and might have four more cracks at it. Nate Leintz checks in at a linebacker position. It was Leintz who had the interception the last time WNG had the ball. 
Picked it off at about the 30, which led to the long touchdown drive. Broughton with the fake, drops it to the outside. Oh, there's a couple of people there. The two number ones meet. And it also looks like Opp was there to help out on the hit, but Cody Hancock made the... Uh, here, here comes the flag. It looks like Hancock got up talking and the official threw the flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct, it looks like. Yep, here comes another unsportsmanlike. Yep, it was a big-time hit. Hancock got up, let him know, I'm okay, you didn't hurt me, and the official thought that was too much talking. And yet again, a great play by the Sioux, and they're going backwards after more penalties. Here's the, here's the call on that. There have been a lot of 15-yard penalties in this game already. Most definitely. Most definitely. It was a big-time play, and that, that's, that's to be expected in football. I mean, helmets crashing, you know, pads smacking, kids are going to get up talking. You know, it just didn't seem like anything too bad, and the official wanted to squash it, nip it in the butt, it looked like. And because it was a dead ball penalty, it, it is marked from where Hancock made the gain on the on the screen pass. But it drops it all the way back to the 46. Need to get to the 26 now for a first down. Second quarter. Coming with a little bit of a blitz. And a little bit of a slant. It's caught by Soloway. And he's right back to about where <laughs> about where the last catch was made. Funny how that works. Bison bring the heat. Sue pick it up well. Finds a man and finds a hole in the zone. Nice pitch and catch. He's always been the number one receiving target today. On the season, Cody Hancock has the most receptions on the passes from Broughton. I mean, Broughton was excellent after in the Linton HMB game after falling behind 28 to nothing. Broughton ended up with 186 yard passing on 12 completions. And he'll try to pass again with pressure up front. He's got room to run, picks up the first down. Broughton up to about the 22. WNG fans getting into it now, making some noise, starting to support their guys. And this is, this is what's been lacking from the Sioux offense. They just haven't been able to have a sustained drive. And this, this might be their longest drive of the, of the game, of the morning. Well, they have hurt themselves with a couple of penalties in this drive, but they have been able to move the ball. See there, big number 75, breaking that huddle. He's a freshman, 6'6", 235, Ooh. Dustin Weeks. Starting left tackle. There he is right there. And we're going to get better. Exactly. And bigger. <laughs> On the first down play. Broughton to the near side, caught by Cody Hancock. Just shy of first down. I think he picked up nine on that play. And the timing now of Broughton seems to be improving a bit. Bison dropping back into his zone. And you see, like you said, Broughton has time. Not a big time rush there. Able to find his receiver, find a nice open spot on the sideline. So the timing is definitely picking up. And the passing game is looking better and better. And the Sioux averaged 31 points on uh, per game on the season. So at this stage of a game, not used to seeing a goose egg up there. Mm -hmm. They're going to call it two to go for the first down. Line of scrimmage to 14. Broughton will run a quarterback draw again. Inside the 10. Broughton on his feet. And the Sioux have scored for the first time today. Nice rush to 14 yards. Great play call. Great execution. Staying on his feet. Reading his blocks. Wouldn't be denied. Fought through a couple of arm tackles. Getting to the end zone. And now you're on the ball. Wow, that is exactly what WNG needed. Points before halftime. I mean, they, they, they're been their biggest enemy. They, got, they have to get out of their own way. Stop making penalties. Start playing smarter football. They started to do that at times on this drive. They still had a couple of dumb penalties. But get out of your own way. Stay on the field. Get, keep the offense moving. Great drive, and now they're going to go for two. And it's a little wildcat situation, it looks like. Nope, not serious being. No, that's Broughton putting uh, Cody in motion to the near side. Broughton with a little pop pass over the middle, and it is caught. And it is a two-pointer. Ethan Miller with the catch, and it's 25 to 8. Looked like the Tim Tebow jump pass there a little bit. Sucks in the defense and put him over the top. Great execution. Like I said, now the fans are back into it. They're going nuts. Still a 29 to 8 deficit, but you got to be feeling a little bit better about yourself 
if you're West Hope Newberg Lindbergh. I don't know if I said 25, obviously 29 to 8. It's a lot. <laughs> and for the first time after a touchdown, the Sioux get to kick it off. Always makes you feel pretty good when that happens. Definitely, definitely. Kicker's been a little cold over there. Tell you what, Jamal, about that, about that touchdown drive, the thing I like the most, the, the most from WNG is after the, the, uh, the unsportsmanlike penalty, two plays later you picked up the first down and you kept the momentum so you didn't let that end it or and, shoot yourself in the foot. And it could have. I mean, that was you just had a big-time play. It was a great physical play. Everyone's feeling good. You move the ball, get that big personal foul penalty, and that could have deflated the team. But they didn't let it stop them. They kept going. Like you said, two plays later, boom, boom, they're in the end zone. Well, they're going to call it a 13-yard touchdown. It's Ten plays, 65 yards, just under five minutes. Like I said, that's their longest drive of the game by far. Side and out of bounds at the 40. That's where he's going to take it. I like I like the thought. I like the uh, the go for it attitude and the mentality of hey we're down. Let's give it a try. Might as well because you would have picked that up. You're in great position to get another score before the half. Now you trust it to your defense. They haven't been able to stop the Bison so far, but. After that, you know, offensive drive, perhaps they've got some newfound momentum, some, some newfound attitude. And Hazen finds itself 51 yards away from the end zone. Stetson Carr, the senior. Coach Brillian says he has full reign to change any play at any time if he comes to the line. Hasn't had the change much it's been working here comes Borneman again near side on the sweep somebody got onto his hips right there and that was uh, Hermes yep Logan Hermes senior outside linebacker and that's that's something you haven't been able to see much today somebody tackling him on the first try now you'll be able to get away there great tackle by Hermes but Borneman always going forward or trying to anyway still picked up about four yards on the play second down and six You mentioned having had a, a lot of need to change the players or audible or take shots downfield. It's been pretty basic stuff out of Hazen today. Option for Carr, pitch to Borneman. Here comes a flag, but Broughton comes up and makes a nice hit, rides him out. Looks like Maybe it came too late. I don't know, there's another flag. Oh boy. The initial flag looked like a hold on the outside. You'd hate to see a personal foul there as a second penalty. Officials talking this one over. Well, I know we call it the Dakota Bowl, but it's been kind of flag fest so far today, hasn't it? It, it has been for sure. <laughs> it has been for sure. I, I've definitely lost count. There's been tons of penalties on both sides. You know, we had already had a player ejected from this one. So, like I said, it hasn't exactly been the cleanest half of football. There's the first flag. Face mask again. Oh, oh on the offense. Hey. Let's take a look at this. Stiff arm. Oh, he ah. grabbed it. Oh, yep. And that's always a tough call. You'll see a lot of offensive players get their hands on this on the face mask, and that's a clean play as long as you don't grab it. When you wrap. Nope. Play. First one is Bowling Green, that is declined. The second one is a personal foul, face mask, green. That penalty is accepted, we'll replay second down. That's the personal foul, is five more yards. Yep. So obviously you want to take the biggest one. And that was it, like I said, he got a handful of face masks. He's been getting, you know, he's been getting his face mask grabbed all day, decided <laughs> to return the favor finally, cost his team 15 yards. You're not supposed to return the favor on those, though, are you? <laughs> no, I think you're supposed to let that one slide. I guess he couldn't help himself. <laughs> Tyler Wassum brings in the play, number 21 for Hazen. He caught the, if I'm not mistaken, the game 
well the, uh, one of the big touchdowns in that Stanley Powers late game. Let's see what Carr does on second and 21. It's Borneman with a handoff, Ooh. and he is buried. Ooh. And there's Hermes again. And he's down. Big hit. Borneman getting up slowly, but he did get up. Borneman took another shot, and this crowd is going nuts now. Big time hit here. Ooh. That ball came out. I didn't even see the ball come out. Yeah, that ball came out. And so it's offense here for WNG. Tell you what, I was I was looking at the hit so much that I didn't realize that the ball flew out of there. That's the type of play you need right before half. Looks like someone's going to come and call timeout here. Uh, there's 2.03. Uh, they're looking at uh, an equipment setup on the Hazen side. Gotcha, but th these are the moments and plays that that. Oh. WNG's been lacking. You get the big time hit, you get the fumble, you force something. Now you got the ball back, ready to make another play. Hermes with the hit, the fumble. Cody gets the edge. And all the way down to about the 22, 23 yard line. Now they're going to say one out at the 24. That is trying to take advantage of a momentum play. Definitely. If you can get a touchdown here, another two point conversion, you are right back in this game. Considering how much Hazen has dominated the first half, that would be a great place for WNG to find itself. That'd be an accomplishment at this point. It really would be. Working out of the eye on this play. Whoop. The handoff and the mistiming between Carly Hancock and there's people wrestling for the ball. A little bit of miscommunication in the backfield there allowed Michael Moss to get in there and blow that one up for Hazen. That will end up being a pickup of about three yards on the play. He just, Hancock just kept going and going and going and then moved the pile all by himself. Kept moving the feet. Physical run. Third and one. Coach Nesvold taking a timeout. So the Sioux definitely want to make sure that everyone's on the same page with a minute 22 to play before the half. Most important play of the half for them, for sure. You want to pick up the first down here. Obviously, you know if they don't get it, as long as they don't set themselves back too far, they're going to go for it again. So you're in two-down territory right now. But, uh, yeah, want to make sure you get this play call right. This is the first of three in a row that we will have for you on NBC North Dakota Sports and a little bit of a break before the AAA game. Nine-man contest is coming up next. That's Divide County against New Rockford Cheyenne. As we mentioned, number one team and the number two team, both unbeaten. Unde it's going to be a great year. Somebody's going undefeated. Somebody's yeah. going to have to suffer their first loss of the season in the championship game, and that's always tough. And the AA contest later this afternoon. Fargo Shanley and Grafton. in the spoilers. Big time matchup. It's going to be the fourth time that these two teams have in met this years. year. So, yeah, two years rather. They know each other very well, turning into a great two-way rivalry there. And after the news, we'll be back for our AAA contest, the Battle of Bismarck Schools. Third down. After the timeout, Broughton will try to pick it up himself. He does. He has much more of the yards before his car cuts him down to the 15. So it is a first down with 118 to play before the half. Nice execution here. Decides not to go down. You picked up the first down. Keep getting a little bit more all the way down to the 15. Great call. Great execution by the offensive line. Now the clock will start. After everything gets set. Trying to take advantage of the fumble off of that big hit. Broughton. Looks over the middle, and it is incomplete. Down among the feet of Hancock, but he tried to thread it through some uh, through a bunch of green jerseys. There's a bunch of traffic there. Got, got kind of lucky. It's just an incomplete pass. Could have been a whole lot worse throwing into that much traffic. No need to force things here. You got a minute. You want to make sure you get some points. So you want to make sure you make smart decisions with the football. Well, the good thing, if you will, on an incompletion at least for the Sioux, the clock stops. Stops the clock. Second down from the 15. Out of the pistol. Actually out of the shotgun it looked like. Broughton, jersey pulled, got the pass away. It's caught up to about the seven yard line. Soloway with the catch. 
Corner in with the tackle. And we're up to 50 seconds left as the Sioux take another timeout. One to go, one in terms of timeouts left. Almost had him with the sack, breaks free. Nice way to keep the eyes open, looking down the field, keeping his head up. Gets rid of the ball, now we got another timeout. Tell you, both teams have had some really nice fundamental form tackles where the guy with the ball ends up with both shoulders squarely going backwards on the turf. Whenever you take away their momentum and take away their feet like that, yep. a nice tackle. See what you're hitting, put your face on their face, drive through the man, put his back on the ground. Great tackling, like you said. And there's been a lot of big-time hits, too. You've had fundamental tackles, but you've had some, some people lowering their shoulders and looking for the home run sports center hit and just knocking people out. It's been a physical battle either way. One more timeout left for Tom Nesvold to use if he so chooses. Three receivers to the field side and even a man in the slot. That's Hancock in the slot. So four receivers for Broughton to the right. He has Cody Hancock to his left. Let's see which way he looks. He looks hand Cody's way, knocked oh. away by a uh, pass a little bit too far behind him. Put him in front of it, and that's a touchdown. Obviously, he's going to take that one in. He had a better chance of making the catch through that ball just behind him. Got to lead the man on the slant route. Farmers Union insurance replay. Great knockdown, too. Dominic Opp getting in there, breaking that one up. Fourth down. Ball needs to cross the five for the first. Fourth down for number four and company. Rolling right side. Got time. Over the middle, incomplete. So Hazen holds, but not until its back was against its own end zone, and the fourth down pass intended for Soloway was incomplete. And even though WNG wanted to come away with points, obviously they needed some points cut to this deficit. You see that the offense is finally starting to pick things up. Looks like they finally figured out the Hazen defense. Able to get the quarterback out on the perimeter, rolling him out, getting him away from the pressure up the middle. So going into halftime, that's some momentum that they hopefully will be able to bring into the second half. You wanted to see them do something well, and they finally start to do that here in the second quarter. And my guess is, is that Hazen will see if it can pop a big running play here. Yeah, they're not taking a knee. No, direct snap to Carr. Oop. Oop. Well, first, we need penalties. There's about uh, three <laughs> players moving before the snap. Wouldn't One be in the backfield, two on the right side. It wouldn't be a drive unless you know, we got some yellow laundry on the field. So now that we've gotten the penalty out of the way, this drive can officially begin. You see a bunch of movement there. I was able to watch a little bit of uh, Bismarck High's semifinal game against West Fargo. Mm -hmm. And... Flag-wise, we're probably about even so far. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah. are, there are a ton of flags in that game last week. Well, now Carr is standing in his own end zone, so the snap from Connor Hill has to be a good one. It is, and it'll be Borneman going straight up the middle, and my sense is is that will be the last snap before. Well, it depends how it's 25 seconds. Oh, they're trying. They're trying to get up their line quickly. Look at this. They're running out of the play. Yep, they'll have to snap it. About a second difference. Pulls it out. Pass. There's Goes a deep ball. Deep, and He's it open. Is caught. It's caught by Connor Dahl. Dahl up the sideline to the Hazen 40 with eight seconds left. Dahl got open along the near sideline. In fact, he was wide open. And now Hazen is in the hurry up. Hazen still has three timeouts left if they want to talk about it, and they'll use one of them. Let's say it'd be smart to take one here. I'm surprised they didn't take one right away when the player was tackled. But, yeah, he definitely got behind the cornerback. You can't get beat, you know, in a situation like this. You can't let anybody get behind you. And had he been hit in stride, he was gone for a touchdown. Well, you see Connor's sister there. Should be proud. <laughs> Should be proud. Dahl has four touchdowns receiving, and if he wouldn't have had to wait a little bit for that ball to come down. He was gone for sure. And like we mentioned, they, they haven't had to throw the ball 
that much. And you see he's wide open. There's no one there. Definitely gets behind number seven and has to wait just a little bit and then keep his balance to stay in bounds. And this is a great job of keeping him in bounds and not letting him get out of bounds and stop the clock. Well, that is a great tackle by Tyler, Denny G. Tyler Simpson. Yep, keeps him in bounds so that they'd have to burn the timeout. But, yeah, you hit him in stride. He's definitely going down the sideline, going the other way, or going for a touchdown, rather. Yeah, Connor Dahl was the number two quarterback behind Carr, but <laughs> you're obviously not playing much if that's the case. <laughs> and so he moved to wideout. Four wideouts out there right now. From the 39, Carr steps up and looking deep to Borneman. A little bit too far. One more play. One second left. Yeah, if you're behind a two-time All-Stater, you're, uh, you're going to have to find another home. If you're WNG, you gotta you gotta play deep. You can't let people get behind you here. You know that they're taking shots into the end zone. You know, don't play press coverage. Play your corners off. Play your safeties deep. Don't let them take shots like that. And Coach Fillion will use his second timeout. Not like you can put him in the bank and use him in the second half. And when you have nine tenths of a second left, you may as well. Yep. Make sure that uh, you have time to discuss things. I don't roll over like cell phone minutes, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Does no good putting them in your pocket, taking them in the locker room with you. An overall Im impressive drive. You, you might have thought that Hazen had lost a little bit of the momentum with the way that WNG was playing, and they come out on this drive, and they could have taken a knee and gone into the locker room, but nope. It's not the way they operate. Put the pedal to the metal, a couple of shots downfield. Now with a second left, they've got another you know, chance to score another touchdown and retake the momentum going into the half. They haven't already done so. Yeah, I don't think we have the uh, that high school kid from where was it that hit that 67-yard field goal? Oh, yeah. So, so he's, yeah. Not, he's not on either one of these teams. He's not on the roster today. So, there's <laughs> so, so Carr will throw for it. <laughs> I think that's Wassum on the high side in the slot. And Carr looking over the middle. He is going to go to Op, and that'll be the half. Well, that was a long first half as we're up to 10.31 in the AM Central time anyway. And Hazen scored the first 29 points. And then with 2.55 to play, the Sioux got on the board. To, and he made the two-pointer to make it 29-8. to eight. So Rick Fillion obviously has to be happy with the way things started with his team as Hazen trying to win the championship and trying to win its 10th game of the year. But Scott is with Coach Fillion now. Guys, Coach Fillion, uh, they got some momentum there at the end of the first half. You, you've seen these guys come back a lot this season. You have to kind of temper the excitement a little bit, don't you? Oh, big time, big time. These guys came down 28-0 from Linton, and you saw it. They, they're going to come back and play the game. This game is far from over right now. What are you guys going to have to do to get back to the way you were playing the first quarter? Relax a little bit. Relax a little bit. Um, just start pushing and get on our blocks again. I think we got a little tired there and just have to rebound and uh, just stick to the game plan. Physical game, lots of penalties, some turnovers. Do you have to talk to the guys about you know cleaning things up a little bit here in the second half? A little bit, a little bit. We just got to tell them to stay clean, like you said, and uh, just play smart. You got to play smart in this game. All right, good luck second half, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, guys, back up to you. Thank you, Scott. Coach Fillion's team on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard leading 29-8 to here in our Class A championship game. We're at the half, and it's the Nodak Mutual Insurance Halftime Report, and it's coming up next on NBC North Dakota Sports. This halftime report is brought to you by Nodak Mutual Insurance, a proud supporter of North Dakota Athletics. And at the halftime of our first championship of four today in the Dakota Bowl, it's Hazen leading 29 to 8 here at the Alaris Center in Grand Forks. Scott Westerberg is ready to take us away through this halftime. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, the Hazen football team has been fortunate enough to not only have the same starting quarterback for three years, but an all-state quarterback as well. His name is Stetson Carr, and Alexander Gorney has more. Carr takes the snap. The Hazen football team has more than a prototypical quarterback. They have Stetson Carr. 
The part of the sport I love the most is definitely competitiveness. You know, and there's always an edge. No matter what team you play, good or bad, there's always going to be that competitive edge, whether you have a rivalry or you know kids in the team that you just want to beat. Carr has been the Bison starting quarterback since his sophomore year. And surprisingly, the thought of football didn't enter the senior's mind until he saw his brother play. I didn't used to play sports when I was younger. I was more involved with rodeos and come from kind of a roping background. Ever since my brother got involved with sports, I got involved also. And I just kind of took a toll and watched my brother play football throughout his high school career. Kind of, you know, influenced me to follow his footsteps and ever since I've been playing. Stetson is a triple threat. The All-State QB not only can run and pass well, but he's a starting defensive back, too. He's a complete football player. Not only is he athletically gifted, but he's got a great football mind. Um, he can dissect the other team's offense uh, defensively. Um, he can take a look at defenses and knows where the weak points are. And he's a great leader, you know. And uh, you talk about a kid that has zero quit in him. He's, he's, he's a kid you want to follow. But if Carr had to choose a side of the ball to play on? I enjoy offense more because, it, to me, it's more thinking. I need to know more about the defense and make decisions rather than just react. And I think that's one of my best attributes is being able to react to tricky situations. Carr helped the Bison earn the number one seed in Region 4, but the ultimate goal is to be the best Class A team in the state. I think a state championship would be incredible. You know, it just burns the bottom of your heart that you just want, you know, more than anything. And to get it would mean, you know, the whole world to me. And it's a world that is just one win away. With the spotlight on Stetson Carr, for NBC North Dakota Sports, I'm Alexander Gorney. Well, Carr hopes to follow in his brother's footsteps and attend UND and also go out for the football team. Eventually, Stetson said he wants to pursue a career in the medical field. We've got more here in the NODAC Mutual Insurance Halftime. It's 29-8, Hazen with the lead over WNG. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the NODAC Mutual Insurance Halftime Report. Well, we saw a lot of Stetson Carr in the first half, and now at halftime, joined by, by his older brother, Bailey, who has had the pleasure of being both a Bison and a Sioux. Yep. You were a Bison and, Halen, and Hazen. Now you're part of the UND football team. You were the Sioux. You're not anything anymore. But, but uh, nice, I'm sure, an off week for you guys and a chance to finally watch your brother play. Yeah, it worked out perfect. It's the first game this year that I've gotten to see, so it's a lot of fun being here and watching him play. Well, you came up short a couple times of reaching this point in the semifinals. Uh, it's, it's happened to Hazen a bunch lately. It's got to be nice to finally see these guys get over the hump. Yeah, it's really nice seeing these guys here and living out the high school dream. You know, everybody wants to play in state, so I'm happy for all these guys and especially the coaches that I got to play for. They deserve it. What's your assessment of the first half? Obviously, Hazen got out big and, and things kind of tightened up there in the in the uh, end of the half. What do you think is going to have to happen here in the second half? Yeah, right away, I mean, we came out and we looked like they couldn't keep up with their speed, but they've closed it down and got a touchdown here, so could be a good game. Well, you're a sophomore now, a defensive back at, at UND. You guys have an off week this week, then just one more game of the season at Northern Colorado. Uh, closing out the sophomore year, how's it been for you so far? It's been a good season. Uh, we've had first year in the Big Sky, and uh, I think we're 5-5 five and five now and looking to go out to Northern Colorado and cap off our season with a win, so it's been a good year. It's probably kind of fun sometimes during the sidelines to watch your offense and some of those games they've hardened and, and Braden Hanson, those guys, they've been but unbelievable, haven't they? Yeah, they're crazy, setting records and everything, first year in the big sky. They're phenomenal athletes. All right, thanks a lot, Bailey, and good luck uh, next week, and hopefully you can enjoy the second half. Thanks. All right, well, we'll return here on the Nodak Mutual Insurance Halftime with Hazen, the lead over WNG. Well, traditions and superstitions can be found everywhere in the world of sports, but at New Salem, the Holsteins, they go a lot farther than your typical lucky pair of socks. On a Friday night this season, I got a chance to ride with the team and find out their unique way of getting to the field. It's about a mile from the high school to the football field in New Salem, but instead of hopping on a bus to make that trip, the Holsteins came up with something a little different. Here comes the Holsteins. Here comes the Holsteins in a cattle trailer. How more, how more appropriate. Yep, you heard that right. A cattle trailer. It's a tradition that started before a junior high game in 1996. We had a big game coming up against center. and We've been getting beat all the time by them and stuff, so we just thought we'd try to throw a little incentive in there. And I told them, you know, we're little Holsteins. Uh, we're going to go out in the old cattle trailer. 
it took another nine years, but eventually the trailer made its way up to the varsity. In 2005, I think, was when it really started to take hold. I believe we did it for homecoming that year, and then we had a nice playoff run at the end of that season, and we had three home playoff games, and, and we, we took it out there, the, the horse trailer, for all those playoff games. And every year from that point on, you know, it's just one of those traditions, and the kids, they look forward to it every year. The ride to the field starts in silence, but as soon as the players pass the opposing team, chaos ensues. Trailer rocks more, and I got a load of kids in the back of football players, and does with a load of cattle sometimes. I wonder who cleaned that trailer all last. Oh, yeah. But the trailer isn't just set aside for Friday nights; it still gets regular use, and the inside bears the proof. My brother and I have a farm south of town here, and and uh, we haul cattle with it quite regularly. It's not just a not just a football player trailer; it hauls cattle. I actually used this stock trailer last week to haul some cattle. He had to check in with me today to see if I cleaned the trailer out. And I kind of halfway cleaned it out. After seeing a lot of other teams' traditions over the years, Coach Kleingen knows they've got something pretty special in New Salem. I'm sure there are some out there that are a little bit more unique, but this one's, this one's pretty unique, yeah. Because you'd be hard-pressed to find another football team that captures the crowd's attention quite like the Holsteins. With the spotlight on the Holsteins' cattle trailer ride, for NBC North Dakota Sports, I'm Scott Westerberg. And the driver, Alan Weiss, has not missed a single Friday night since they started that tradition. Guys, LT and Jamal, send it back up to you. All right. Thank you very much, Scott. As you see the Sioux back on the sidelines in our first half highlights, Jamal obviously dominated early uh, by the uh, by, by Hazen as we take a look at first. I'm sorry, our stats, we're halftime stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Industry. These as well dominated by Hazen. Exactly. You look at 354 yards of total offense by Hazen. They've definitely been moving the ball well, but the penalties are unbelievable. 12 combined penalties, 120 yards, some sloppy football. Hopefully that gets cleaned up in the second half. But nearly 200 yards more of total offense by Hazen, and they both ran similar number of plays. Um, West Oak NG with the 44 and 43 plays for Hazen in that first half. And Briar Borneman with uh, 147 yards rushing himself, averaging over nine yards a carry. And as a team, Hazen averaging 10 yards, over 10 yards a carry. So obviously Hazen uh, winning on the scoreboard and winning in the stat book. Definitely. You know, like you said, they're, they're riding Briar Borneman. He, he had 9.2 yards a carry, and he got him off on a great start here with his touchdown run. Real physical. Lowers the shoulder, getting into the end zone, kind of set the tone for the day. Yeah, that was a 15-yard touchdown in Hazen's opening drive on the second drive of the game for Hazen. It was Stetson Carr who finished it off from five yards out. Like we talked about, the read option was there all first half. And then a little bit of an offensive play here. And speaking of an option, it was a pass, but Hunter Broughton elected to run it. And then Borneman strips it away, but the Sioux were able to get back on top of it. So, uh... So good plays on both ends of that. Heads up play by both sides. Unfortunately, it didn't result in any points, though, for the suit. And here's an interception from Lines that helped set up another 74-yard uh, touchdown run. And that was capped by Borneman again. Here's part of that rushing. We talked about his running. I mean, just he's run so hard. He's been blasted a couple of times. Yep. But he keeps going forward with yep. 100 yards. Yards after yards. contact. He's moving his legs. He's constantly getting hit, but he's still finishing his runs. Carr finishes off that drive from uh, a short touchdown there. And at that point, it was 29 to nothing. But then Broughton helped get things turned around. Big time run, 13 yards. Hunter Broughton takes it in. They would get the two-point conversion. That would get him up to eight points right before the half. And Borneman, there's that Ooh. big hit. He took a hit. He took a couple of big hits. But that was a real nice one turned in uh, by uh, Logan Hermes. And that's where we are at the half. We're about three minutes away from the start of the third quarter. And we'll be back with continuing Dakota Bowl coverage on NBC North Dakota Sports. Your halftime report brought to you by Nodak Mutual Insurance, a proud supporter of North Dakota Athletics. I'm here with Coach Nesfeld and Coach. Uh, penalties, turnovers, things in the first half. Did you have to talk to your guys about you know cleaning things up a little bit? Well, I think we got to clean things up both ways. Quit talking and just play football. Um, you know, we put one play together at a time and, and uh, get some consistency going. We'll be all right. You guys are in a very familiar position down at the half. You've come back all postseason long. Does that help then not have such a, a somber message in the locker room? Well, like I said, we, we talk about it and, and break it down in minutes and everything else, but 
the bottom line is, like I said, we got to make plays and we got to be cons more consistent offensively and defensively, and we'll be fine. And uh, momentum, they got some there at the end of the second quarter. What do you need to do to keep that going? Well, like I said, we, we got to make plays. I mean, it's that simple. You know, we got to keep our mouths shut and make plays and, and, and go out and have some fun. All right, good luck second half, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you. Thank you, Scott. The Dakota Bowl on NBC North Dakota Sports. Tom Nesbold in his 22nd year of coaching, 16 as the head coach. First time ever that West Hope has been to the football championship game. Glenn Byrne back, I think it was in 88, made it into the finals. But it's a co-op among the three teams. They're, the schools are 35 miles apart, so they're used to traveling uh, just for practice and getting together. Well, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's no problem to come out here, especially when you're in a championship game. The whole fan, the whole community's out here. And it's nothing for the team. Like I said, they travel all the time, so it's not that bad for them. And the Sioux will get the ball to start the second half, so that offensive momentum, momentum that Scott was talking about with Coach Nesfold, that opportunity here to, to take what you learned there late in the in the first half and continue it now to start the second. If you're Coach Nesfold, you look your guys in the eye in the locker room, you tell them, hey, guys, we got them right where we want them. This is what we do. Like I said, they're a second-half team. They have been in the playoffs. You don't want to, you know, risk your luck too much, but... 60 points they've scored in the second half of their three playoff wins, and they're only giving up six. So it's a team that knows how to make the adjustments, not just execute on the field. The coaching staff makes the adjustments. The players go out. They get it done on the field. We'll see if they can keep that momentum going and put something together now to get the ball first. Yeah, in the fourth quarter against Langdon Munich, it was a 20-point quarter. So uh, the Sioux definitely can score in bunches and has during the playoffs, as Jamal just talked about. If they keep delivering those physical hits, you got to believe they're going to force some more fumbles. I mean, they're, they're flying to the football a little bit more. They're, they're getting good shots on them when they can square them up. So if they get a couple of turnovers, it could be a whole different ball game here in the second half. Starley Summer, the junior, has it teed up, waiting for the whistle. We now have the whistle, and a low line drive kick is going to scoot past, and it's a break for the Sioux right off the bat as it rolls out of bounds at the 10, so we'll move it up to the 35. Pretty good kick. It just didn't stay in. If it stayed in, that would have been a big-time break for Hazen, but unfortunately, the ball bounces out of bounds, so we're going to take over at the 40-yard line. And I don't know if it's fitting or not, but we start the second half with a penalty. A penalty. <laughs> like I said, now, <laughs> now that the yellow laundry's on the field, things can get underway. That there. seems to be how things work. There, we got that out of the way. Let's just hope <laughs> that's the last one. <laughs> going to re-kick it, rather, instead of starting on the Okay. Court. Yeah, that's your two options. <laughs> options to take it up to the 35 or re-kick it. College now, you just take the ball automatically. Exactly. So you're right. Now, penalty's done with. Now we can get back some clean football. And got to think they'll squib it again. They've been squibbing all game long. It's worked for them for the most part. So I wouldn't kick it deep if I was Hazen. No, five-yard mark off from the 35 to re-kick it. Or no, we go to the 35 mm -hmm. and re-kick. And re-kick. The penalty is not the yardage, it's the it's the option to re-kick. Yep. Which of course gives you an indication of how much that Coach Nesbold wants his playmakers. Oh. And it's caught in a nice catch on the far side. A little pop-up catch that Shell. Reese Shell making the catch. One of the freshmen on the far side tried to pop that up and maybe get to it. So a little bit of gambling going on by Coach Fillion. Right off the top. And you got the big lead, so why not give it a shot? You tried to squib it. That didn't work. Go for the pop-up, the short kick. And, you know, the negative part is that it, it gives WNG great field position. But uh, it was a gamble worth taking. Seemed like it line drive maybe a little bit more than Summer wanted it to. But, yeah, you start in Hazen territory. So the Sioux at the 49. And Broughton, as he has done a lot, back to pass, and he finds his man wide open in the square out. But Cody Hancock cannot quite hang on to it. Moving his body and turning his head before he secures the catch. He was already heading upfield before he tucked that ball away. Got to see the ball in. Make sure you catch it before you look away. As you can see, he just turns his head too soon. All those kids at home, make sure you watch the ball in your hands before you turn upfield. Yeah, Broughton was 10 of 18 passing in the first half. And a lot of that was to those sideline plays that were wide open. They were running that short out there, picking up five yards at a time. And you saw it was open there again. So if he can hit on those, they can get some momentum going on offense. Broughton again on second down, looking into the same way to, to the same receiver, but not the same result. It is a catch 
up to about the 42. Nice route, nice catch, nice throw. Yeah, Broughton last week against uh, Langdon Munich, he threw for over 200 yards and was 14 of 26. And I, I guess that's the thing, when you do get behind, you're going to throw it a little bit more than you would if you were ahead and you can just run the ball all day. So it gives your quarterback an opportunity to get into a rhythm early, like you see right here. Comes out of the shotgun, he's slinging it already. Gain of seven, third down. Snap bounces around. Broughton makes the best of it. He connects with Conway for a first. And the penalty. The flag was thrown about 10 yards deeper than where the catch was made. In the area of pass interference or defensive holding. And my hope among hopes that the out-of-bounds kickoff would be our last penalty of the game is for not about four plays later. Things are looking a lot like the first half so far to start this second half. Dave yeah. Carlsrud on the right among the cluster of three officials. Hazen. Dave again for years was in charge of the officiating side of things with the Activities Association. Hazen had five penalties in the first half. They've already got two here in the second on the very first drive of the game or you know, in the early parts of the second half rather. They've already got two penalties so now they've got seven penalties for the game. This will be an automatic first down on the defensive holding. So you mark it from the line of scrimmage. Holding green 10 yard penalty first down. And again, I think you're right, Jamal. I think the hold came 10 or 15 yards away from where the pass was on the deeper part of that multiple pattern. Yep. Run the safety, run a, run a receiver deep, takes the safety away, and the safety kind of got a hold of him. Frees up the underneath man working one-on-one -on -one against the corner to make that catch, but safety can't be as physical so far down the field. So we move it to the 32, where it's a first and 10 now for the WNG Sioux. Out of a straight eye. An option for Broughton. Dangerous pitch as he was being hauled down, but it works. And it is going to go. Hancock is going to pop it from 32 yards. And WNG is on the scoreboard with the first touchdown of our second half. And that was a pretty pitch from Hunter Broughton. Looked like he kind of chucked it out there with two hands. He was getting wrapped up. He knew what the play was, knew he had time to make it. He just kind of flicks it out there. Great pitch, great catch, and he's gone. Cuts it inside down the left sideline. Very, very, very nice run. And there's that momentum we talked about. They strike quickly. They know how to adjust at halftime. And just like that, they're on the board with their first drive in the second half. And going for two. Broughton will take the direct snap this time. Empty back, five receiver set. He motions Hancock into the backfield. It'll be a reverse the far side to Soloway. And he looks like he has the flag, and he does. It's 29 to 16 on the two-point conversion. And the Sioux have scored on the opening drive of the third. We'll be right back with more on the Farmers Union Insurance Scoreboard. He's in 29, WNG 16. Well, that opening touchdown drive, a 32-yard run by Cody Hancock, and the two-point conversion makes it a 13-point game. And now just think on that fourth down player at the end of the, you know, near the end of the first half or the last possession for, for the Sioux, if they could have got that in on fourth down, wow, we'd really be a tight in the ball game. At Definitely this point. would have changed the complexion of the game. They already had momentum going into the half because their offense was finally able to put together a drive. Now you see they come out here, they go into the shotgun, they go right into the passing game, run a couple of outs, then you hit them with the option. So great balance on that drive with the pass and the run. It's taken a while for the officials to get the ball to be kicked off or to be set up to be kicked off anyway. Three plays, didn't take long. 32 seconds right off the bat. Long 32-yard run by Hancock. He's got great speed for a guy his size. Well, that was a little bit of the risk reward that Coach Fillion took by trying to get that pop up kick because he gave him a midfield. I mean, it was a 49 yard drive, so it wasn't a long one. Nope, nope. Like, and that's what said, made it easy. Now it looks like they're going for the onside kick here. And Carly Hancock is loading up the left side, it looks like. They tried the onside the last time, and here comes the onside again. 
and it is covered up nicely by Hazen. So the Bison will take over about 52 yards away from the end zone. And you got plenty of time here, but they're you know the, the kick didn't take the bounce that they wanted. And Jaden Reich does a nice job of just gobbling it up. Great job, as you see. It's on the hands team for a reason. Pops right on that, but. It is a gamble because now you're giving them the ball at midfield and it's already an offense that strikes quickly. So I don't know. I thought you might have had plenty of time, but the suit felt that it was a uh, it was time to take that risk. Yeah, again, an offense. If you uh, missed our halftime stats that rolled up 354 yards of total offense. And now it's Hazen's first time. So Borneman on the ground. That's been the major play. And that's the guy with the ball right now. He'll bounce it to the outside. Broughton closes out on him. And a pickup of about three. It's bad. I was looking for the flag. I was wondering if it was <laughs> going to come out for the face mask because I'm just so used to seeing that. Plus, you know, on the stiff arm and on the tackle. He's, he's looking at the ref, telling him, hey, give me something. Hunter Broughton leading the Sioux in tackles this year. 127 tackles, 61 assists. Oof. That's a bunch. Tackling machine. Atmosphere here at the Alaris Center has kind of shifted a little bit than it was in the first half. It's a little more energy here now. Tournament on the end around. And he's up to, a, where are they going to mark this? Right at the 45, so that picks up about three. A little different look to get the ball to him. Yep, nice play. Missed tackle there. Gets out of bounds, able to pick up enough yards to make it third and manageable. Alex Valley, a senior, running in the play. Number 84, you see him right there. Boy, after scoring on your opening drive, this... I'm not saying Hazen won't go for it, but this could be, you know, if the Sioux can stop him right here. That'd be big. It's more momentum swinging to... The suicide. Carr hands off close to the first down. That's Nate Lines running it. Very close, depending on the spot here. Looks to be a hair short. Nate's the inside the tackle guy. I mean, when he runs it, it's basically that little dive plays. Third on the team in rushing, in both number of carries and yards this year. What do you do? Go for it. Looks like it. If you're going to pop up the, the kickoff right away and give <laughs> and give WNG the ball at the at your own 49, you're not worried about going it on their 43. Not at all. No, I and mean, here's the fourth down play. <laughs> Out of the shotgun. Could be an important play for both teams. And Carr on a quarterback delay. Falls for enough. We might have to measure it. Looks like they might bring out the chains on this one. Sue got into the backfield. Credit the Hayes and offensive line for continuing the fight because Sue had pressure there. Yep, bring the chains in. We're going to have to measure this one. First measurement of the game. Hazen for years and years and years made it to the semifinals and then made it. Uh, this is the first Dakota Ball championship game since. 2001, that's when the Bison uh, lost to Velvis Sawyer. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's when the Aggies had back-to-back -back state championships that year. And Hazen, in Class 11B, which doesn't exist anymore, won the title in 1996. And that was the last year that North Dakota had three classes of football. So in, obviously in 97, it added the fourth class, which is now class. Uh, well depending on what you want to do. Class A or double A, they kind of split that. Mm -hmm. Well, the first down was by just enough, so Hazen for the first and 10 from the 42, and Carr is going to keep it, follow Lines' block, and Carr gets up to just shy of the 35, we'll say the 36-yard line. Pretty good first down yardage. And they're wasting no time going right back to their bread and butter, the read option, and give it to your, your two-time All-State quarterback and let him make the right play. and. That's what worked for them all in the first half. They didn't have to throw the ball at all, come out here. You knew that was going to be the case in the second half. They were going to go right back to this play, and it's able you know, to pick up great yards for them on first down. Yeah, Stetson had a, an outstanding day in the uh, in the win against Hart River, that 41 to 14 win. He had 242 yards rushing that day. Now he's going to look for yards through the air, and he's going to look deep, and it's caught by Op inside the 10, muscled out at the five, so 
the Sioux will pick up a personal foul at the end of this a little bit too much muscle but up with the catch was that not eight or nine Looks like nine a okay bit. up with the call or with the catch and then I thought maybe it was this Connor Hall but then a flag at the end of this down to the six so that'll move it to about the three if you're WNG you got it's it's pretty simple you just can't allow people to get behind you I don't know if they got sucked in on the on the play fake but he caught this ball standing still. He was wide, wide open. Half the distance to the goal. No, that's number eight. eight, Connor Dahl, excuse me. So my eights and nines look, a lot, uh, look, uh, look alike today. From up here, they're, they're a little blurred. So yes, the personal foul does move it to the three. Carr and Borneman share the touchdowns. Lines trying to get there, but he picked up about a yard of it. Nate will pretty soon turn in his football equipment for our hockey skates. He's a beautiful hockey player. So many players are in the state of North Dakota and obviously in Minnesota as well. Borneman motions back into the backfield. Hand off to Breyer, and he's held short. Third down is next. And here's where I expect Hazen to get out on the edge, something that allows them to get in the space and make a man miss, possibly. Starting to get a little push from WNG up the middle, so I expect Hazen to take this to the outside. I think the two plays have picked up about a yard. Seaslack and Moss on the right side of the offensive line. That's where Hazen gets so many of those those uh, yards. That's 77 and 79. Yeah, and Seaslack's a big fella at 6'3", 251. So I'd run behind him too. Here we go. And Carr will pitch it to Borneman and lead block on this. And Borneman is losing yards back to the five. So three nice run stops in a row by the Sioux. And there was their effort to get out to the edge. You can see the toss play. Tons of lead blockers, but the Sioux stretch it out. They're able to chase down, make a great tackle, and hold them there. Lost the three yards on the play. Timeout taken by Hazen. And funny you used the word chase because that was Chase Conway that made the tackle. And it'll be fourth and five. Sioux so get a stop here. You obviously have big time life on defense. The offense is produce some points early here in the third quarter you get a stop here and everything's seeming to go their way this will be the second fourth down play of the drive the last one was fourth and one where just a, Hazen made it by a few inches that's all you need game of inches but that fourth and one was big obviously allowed them to keep the drive going and you put them in a situation here where now they've got an opportunity to get some more points extend their lead This will be a key play for both teams, obviously, going forward here. Yeah, you saw that low-angle shot of the, the goal marker. Of course, that is where Hazen needs to get here on fourth down. Otherwise, WNG will take over. And Hazen made a fourth and goal stop late in the first half. Mm -hmm. WNG trying to do it here. Right in the same spot. Dulls wide to the right. Lines slotted to the right. Borneman in the backfield along with Carr. Fourth down. Roll. Pressure. Man's open. Dahl. Touchdown. He caught it. Yep. What a catch. Way to get his foot down. Great concentration. There was pressure coming off the back edge by the Sioux. They had the backside blitz. Hazen beat it by rolling out. Great throw and even a better catch. Very impressive. Look at this. The knee is inbound. You only need one in high school, and Connor Dahl does it. That's a great catch. Fourth and goal. We'll put six more on the board for Hazen. Fear is in to try to add the PAT. You see Carr is his holder. And both teams have scored on its opening drive of the third quarter. Kick is up and good. Hunter puts that one right through. Farmers Union Insurance replay. Back to the 20-point lead, 
Hermes was coming hard, wasn't he? That was a great blitz call. I, I thought he was going to get there for a second. He, the quarterback took a shot, but great call to move him out to the right. Felt that the blitz was coming. Made a great throw. Just couldn't get him down in time. Well, in the playoffs, you know, if you're, if you're looking for, from Hazen's perspective, they've, uh, you know, the Bison have won both ways. They've won high-scoring games, and they won a defensive game. The defensive game was the shutout last week against Stanley Powers Lake, and the high-scoring games against Hart River, 41 points, and, uh, you know, Berthold, our Redeemers, uh, 50 points in that one. Well, the, ha the Hazen defense really picked it up in the second half of the season. They had that rough start. They started 2-2. Two and two. You know, the team kind of had some rough losses early, but then they rattled off seven wins in a row, and in those seven wins, they gave up just nine points a game. So the defense kind of carried them down the stretch in those seven games. Like you said, the 14-0 the shutout Stanley Powers Lake is, is really what stands out. Ten plays, 52 yards on that touchdown drive. Is that their longest drive of the day in terms of plays? Plays, yes, not yardage. Yes. They're the longest for yardage, I think, was a 70, oh, no, 83-yarder. Yeah, they got, right, a, they got in the plays. chunk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the kick that goes, goes out, again. and Coach Nesvold will really have him, and he's going to have him re-kick it, I think, just like he did last Pick time. Kickoff is out of right. bounds. They've chosen to re-kick five yards back. So I'm not so, taking any chances with the return game. It's yeah. been squib, squib, squib all day. He'll re-kick at the 35. Yeah, Broughton's the deep guy in the middle. I think he's only had one return, and that was when it wasn't even kicked his way. It was picked over here on the squib. He reversed and lost some yards on it. At this point, would you move him up and make him one of the, one of the men in the middle, <laughs> kind of move him around and give him, closer? give him a chance because they're not kicking it deep at all? I'm pretty sure this one's not going deep either. Hey. It, it is, and this time it was Fears that kicked it. And it does come to Broughton, who's going to pass back to Cody. Cody on the wide side, but Hazen has it read very well. And it is a super play over on the far side by Carl Hayes. Hayes is a junior. He did his job, didn't he? Great play by the Hazen special teams. Doesn't over-pursue. Plays like this, you have to do what you're asked to do. Don't try to run all over the field and make the tackle. Stay in your lane. Do your assignment. And he did that. Stayed on his side of the field. Made a great tech, great tackle, read that play very well. Great job of the Hayes and special teams unit. Yeah, it appeared on that play that Hayes was was the guy on the wide side. No one's supposed to get wider than you, and he did his job. Exactly. So from the 33 is where the Sioux will take over. And Broughton, after a couple of fakes, will go back to pass, and he does connect with Ethan Miller. Up to near midfield to the 49. That route has been there all day. As long as you can get open, the, the throw will get to you. That little out route has been there off the play action as well as out of the shotgun. Seemed to like that sideline route. Farmers Union Insurance bringing you the replays today. Too tight, empty. That might be the first time we've seen that today. Mm -hmm. Rolling to the near side, Ooh. looking deep, and the pass is short, and a flag interference coming. That's the two number sevens were guarding each other. There was a big time block on the edge as he rolled out right. Tight end came back, blocked inside, cut a man off. Huge block there on the offensive line, giving more time to throw. This will be marked off from the line of scrimmage, and it will be a first down. Pass interference, screen, that's 15 yards, automatic first down. The car came in a little early on Tyler Simpson, who is the intended receiver. As the flag fest continues. I thought Broughton first was trying to look to Cody Hancock because he was busting deep, but he... But he was on the on the scramble so hard that I don't think he could get the ball the 35 to 40 yards he needed downfield without planting himself. And if he planted himself, he might have got planted. Would have took a shot for sure. Up to Hazen's 30, uh, yeah, 36 yard line. Broughton on the slide, and he is able to get good yardage. It looked like he was going to be thrown for a loss. There's three Hazen players 
back going, how did we miss him? That's a great decision by Broughton. He wanted the slant. The slant wasn't there. He pulls the ball down, looking to make something happen, keeps his head up, decides to take off, picks up big-time yardage, but great decision not forcing that throw into coverage, realizing that his team needs points, can't afford turnovers right now, being very smart with the ball. So Hunter hauls it up to the 29. Gain of seven. This spread has kind of uh, been the best look from the Sioux. Little out pass caught by Miller again. He makes a move to pick up the first. I agree, but it's it's kind of like we talked about a little bit during the break. If you're such a great second half team and making an adjustments in the playoffs, you've done such a good job at finding what works for you and doing it. Where is this early in the game? Where is the where is the shotgun? Where was the spread early in the game? Because it, it's sure working right now. So the first down. For West Hope, Newberg, Glenburn. Almost exclusively pass for good reason. Caught by Simpson, and he picks up the first. We're going to change. The offensive line's giving him all day to throw. He's sitting back there in the pocket. I think Hazen's dropping a lot in the coverage. That has something to do with it as well. But the offensive line's protecting him very well, giving him all time, all sorts of time to throw and find his receivers. Well, Brett Johnsrud is the defensive coordinator for Hazen, and he's being put to the test right now. Most definitely. Now you got to try to decide, am I going to come with the pressure? Am I going to keep bringing people back in the coverage while they're throwing the ball? Especially out of the spread formation, you don't know what they're going to have to do. Let's see who Broughton looks to this time. Oh, it's a quarterback draw up the middle, squeezes through the initial, backs his way in for the touchdown. The ball went loose, but once it goes over the end zone, it doesn't matter. Broughton with the touchdown run. Great, great effort by Broughton. Hunter Broughton doing exactly what needs to be done. Take a look here at the replay. Takes it up the middle, breaks the tackle there, stays on his feet, breaks another tackle here, gets into the end zone. It's all hustle, all effort there. It's Offense is really starting to click here early on in the third quarter. Chance to make it a 12 point difference. Broughton over the middle, tried to squeeze it in there, and it was Bornem, and I think that knocked it away. So the two point is no good, and the score is 36 to 22. So you got to feel good if you're the Sioux. You're two drives in a row, back to back. You're able to move the ball down the field with the pass. Doesn't exactly make the best decision here throwing it into double coverage. But at the same time, it did just run the ball in for the touchdown to give him 22 points. So the, the offense has really, really come to play here in the third quarter. They're moving the ball well. The spread, like we mentioned, is working. Now the defense has to be able to make a couple of stops. Yeah, every possession has ended up in the end zone, I think, hasn't it? Yep, so far. So far. Three for three. So now the defense just uh, has to get some stops. And so far in the game, yeah, they, they really haven't been able to slow down Hazen at all. Okay. There's your five plays, 67 on the 10-yard touchdown run. They're not wasting time either. They're, they're getting in there quickly, and they kind of need to at this point in time because when you're down, I, even though it's, it's not – crunch time yet when you're trailing in the second half you want to score as quickly as possible they've been doing a good job of that so far well the initial look here is the onside see what Hancock wants to do with it and of course Hazen after seeing all those onsides has eight men close this one will go deep and I think that's towards Stefan Stefan trying to find a little seam but he is hauled down by Soloway up at about the 40. Good decision to kick it deep. Didn't Again, didn't need the onside, didn't want to give up the field position, even though Hazen ends up getting the ball to the 40, so it's fairly close anyway. It might have been the exact same thing. Yeah, really, you know, if you, like the last time you went for the onside and didn't and you didn't get it, but still it's only a 10-yard difference. So exactly. if you look at it that way, then the risk-reward might be worth the risk. Next time, I'm sure they'll think about it. We've already done it once. All-state quarterback Stetson Carr, his third year as the starter. 
efficient. Six completions, 148 yards and a touchdown, but Borneman on the ground is being, no, he got to the edge. Borneman, first down and more. Oh, and, and it was uh, Cody Hancock going, uh, 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 I almost had him and then zipped these 10 yards past I me. I thought Hancock had him in the backfield. Hancock reaches out, gets nothing but air here. Unbelievable, the speed get to the outside. Good look on the Farmers Union Insurance replay. But that's exactly why he's close to 10 yards of carry. He's got the speed, he's breaking multiple tackles, and all he needs is a crease, and he's gone. And again, in that first half, Breyer with 147 yards rushing. So now you see him up to 158 on 21 carries. He's been the workhorse. Most definitely. You know, he should be as well as it's working. Carr pulls it out of his stomach, looks to go long. This pass floats a little bit, and it is incomplete. Offensive player turned defensive player. Josh Earhart was just making sure that that thing was not intercepted back on the defensive play. Well, that's a great job to get back and make sure that if he's not catching it, nobody's catching it. He tries to, like you said, become a defensive back in that situation. But if you can get him in stride, he was wide open there again. Yet another penalty on this play. Looks like holding. They're going to march him back again. Let's see what the referee has to say. Holding. Green. Spot ball. 10 yards. Replay first down. Yeah, a hold from the spot. So back to the 30, uh, between the 38 and 39 yard line. Forty-two to go in the third. Four receiver set. Double wide, double slot, and a quarterback draw. So you spread it to run it. Carr squeezes out of one tackle up to the 46-yard line. Solid pickup there and trying to get back as much as possible after the penalty. Like I said, spread them wide. It was a design quarterback draw from the get-go. Picks up nice yardage too. You take Nate Lines, your fullback, and turn him into your turn him into your lead blocker, and the freshman Chase Conway making the tackle. Second down, about 18. Carr will keep it again. He's got good blockers in front of him. Good stiff arm from Carr. Carr steps out at about the 40-yard line. Stetson Carr has long arms, and it helps him in the running game for that particular reason, and the you stiff can, arm. And you can see the stiff arm coming up here right away. He's very patient with it, sees it coming. Just a little touch there. It doesn't have to be very physical with it. It works to his advantage, but this really hurts the Sioux. You had, you had Hazen all the way backed up. Your defense is trying to make the stop that they haven't been able to make all day. Had him in first and long, second and long, and allow that big time run and now it's third and four they need to stop here car averaging a hair over 10 yards a carry third and manageable car looking to set up a screen it looks like now he's going to heave it deep intended for borneman it's oh. caught by Breyer right at about the 21 yard line that ball hung in the air hung in the air and then just squeezed over the defender and in the number one's hands. Thought that one was going to be picked off. You're right. It had. It just. It stayed up there all day. I don't know who that was. I. I can't tell what defender it was. But he had a shot at a pick. Zach Khan couldn't bring it in. The ball stayed up there all day. And a really, really nice catch to go up and get it in traffic. So Borneman with the pass reception. And Hazen's offense is down to the 20. Borman, no. Carr keeps it. Tried the stiff arm again, but it's tough to stiff arm 265 pounds. Yeah, <laughs> Michael <it's>, Schiff. <laughs> it's not as easy as when you're trying to stiff arm a linebacker or a defensive back. So Michael, the senior defensive tackle with the with the play to, I don't know if you're gonna squeeze a yard out of that or not. Yeah, you give, you'll give him one maybe on the play. But yeah, he's the reason that they're, you know, getting to the outside and not so much up the middle. 
is a Shep because he's a big guy, 300 pounds. He's a true nose tackle, like you mentioned, who can get up there, take up space, occupy blockers, and create havoc in the middle of that defensive line. Yeah, he slid over because Corinto was the nose. And here comes Borneman. Stepped out at about the six. Oh. Picked up the first down. A nice stiff arm by him, too. Able to get to the edge, and that's that's been working for him all day. Get to the edge, get out in space, make people miss. Just get outside. Oof, nice stiff arm there. Josh Earhart running the play in. The Bison have used a number of different players to uh, bring the ball in, or the ball, the call into the huddle. Mm -hmm. Well, the last time we were here, Connor Dahl on a fourth down play made a great catch in the high side of the end zone. But it's first down, not fourth down. So we'll see what Carr wants to do. He'll hand off to Borneman, and he will blast over. It's a touchdown for Borneman. I believe his third of the game. And the offensive show of the second half continues as both teams have scored on two possessions. I thought he might have been a little bit winded coming back to the huddle after that long run there. He looked a little bit tired. He had his head down. Nope. Just playing possum. Give him the ball. He's going right into the end zone, running strong through some arm tackles. Yet another, another, yet another touchdown for Hazen. Another long drive given up by the Sioux defense. Seaslack comes in to the huddle a little bit late, but Hazen still has plenty to work with here. There's 12 seconds now on the play clock, and it's a two-point conversion attempt for Carr and company. Up by 20 right now. Carr on the pitch to Borneman. What a play. And the two-point is no good as Broughton makes the tackle for a loss. And it is a 42-22 to 22 lead for the Bison. Hunter Broughton read that play all the way. Misses assignment football. Shoots into the gap. Takes the running back right from the get-go. Doesn't worry about the quarterback. Let somebody else do that. His, did his assignment. Shoots into the gap and blows up that two-point conversion. Nice play by Hunter Broughton. This is the problem now. You see, it's a 20-point lead. You've been able to score the ball in the third quarter. Your offense is doing exactly what you wanted to do, but you can't make a comeback without defensive stops, and they are just unable to stop Hazen when it really matters. They had him backed up, like I said, first and long, second and long, and they allowed him to convert to third and four. Just can't stop him. Seven play, 60-yard scoring drive, two minutes, 23 seconds there for Hazen. That's been about right for them. They've had the ball about two minutes and 20 seconds every <laughs> single time, so that's that's nothing's really changed for Hazen. Yeah, last touchdown drive was 10 plays. This one, as we saw, seven. But yeah, when you get your offense rolling and you score twice already in the third and you've gained only one point. Yep. It's tough to swallow. Yep. Which, of course, is a credit to the team in green. Okay, you gotta give, gotta tip your hat to Hazen because they come right back out even after they give up the touchdown. The defense is obviously giving up more points. Hazen's defense is giving up more points here, but the offense isn't slowing down at all. They're still doing what they're asked to do and gonna kick it deep again here. Fear kicks it to Conway. And the freshman to the 35 all the way to the 40. Nice return by Conway. And that is Dominic Opp making the tackle. 49-yard touchdown drive and a 67-yard touchdown drive. That's what the Sioux have done in the second half. And this has been about where they've started the ball in those two drives, right around the same uh, spot, right at the 40. Pretty good field position. Comes right back to the shotgun, just like it's been working for them the whole third quarter. Go right back to what works. And out of the empty with a double tight and a quarterback draw not much there there's and a face mask the flag there's a first down coming because of the face mask there's yep. The, yep there's a face mask Looked like a late hand got in there farmer genian insurance replay oh i don't know about that one looked like he got him up jersey. by the shoulder pads yeah by the jersey but look from the uh from the personal foul, got him made the call mask, that he got him green, up by the helmet. Looked like he dragged him down by the ear holes, but that was not the case. 
Okay, well, they didn't call face masks. They called pers personal foul, so that's a much different deal. Exactly. There's where we are, standing right at about the 50, high up between the coaching booths on uh, each side of us. Pretty good view from up here. Mm -hmm. NBC North Dakota sports crew. We're hunkered down for the day. This is the first of four Dakota Bowl championship games for you on our five stations across the state. So the penalty is a first down. I love this formation now. Three to the wide side, looking for a bubble. No, looking to go deep. It is Cody, a little oh. bit overthrown. Cody Hancock, intended receiver. He did beat his man by a step. Great play. There's two plays in a row where they fake the bubble. The first time they fake the bubble, ran the draw. This time they fake the bubble and go deep. Just hoping to bring that safety up a little bit more. And this time he had the man open. Just couldn't make the catch. Got a paw on it, but let him a little bit too far. But yeah, the, the, empty, the empty formation with the, the two tight has been their bread and butter. And they're going right back to it just one like, more time. Yeah, just like this, double tight with a wing. Two wide outs to the high side. Ooh, we crack back block. Boom, oh. and a big hit on the other end. So Carr separates Soloway from the ball. Physical football all the way around. I and mean, here's that crack back block you're talking about right here. Pow. Number 30 with a big one in the defense delivering a shot of their own. Nice physical play from both sides. Uh, the, the key for that block is to make sure you stay up high, though. You don't want to. You don't want to be below the waist on something like that. Yep. Yep. Nice physical play. Third down and ten. And Hazen's crowd getting it revved up a little bit. And it is caught by Conway and a first down. Great Pick up protection. of eleven. Great protection. They picked up the extra man coming on the blitz. He had time to throw, put just enough touch on this ball. Here's the pickup of the blitz right there. Picks him up and great throw just over the hands of the linebackers in front. Really nice play call. Really great execution by WNG. Yeah, the Sioux averaging 137 yards a game passing on the season. But obviously today, about the only way that you know, other than a few quarterback draws, able to, to move the ball. So mm -hmm. almost exclusive pass. Here's Broughton again, looking long, not there. It was covered, so now he'll get what he can. Dives his way up to about the 27. And the pass, like you said, exclusively, the run the run hasn't been there unless it's a play just like that where the pass breaks down or it's a get a long quarterback draw up the middle earlier in the game. But sideline has been wide open for them all game long. They've been hitting the wide receivers there to picking up first, first downs, getting out of bounds. It's just a matter of now keep continuing to get points when you can because you can't afford to come away with nothing here in the second half. Here's the eye. Hancock will take the pitch. And he's trying to come back to the near side. There's Carr to eventually make the tackle. He got some help in the backside, too, there from Sanders. It was a great play. Saw so they snipped it out from the get-go, snuffed it out wide, tried to come back into the middle, ran into another host of Hazen defenders. Really, really good job there by the Bison. And once Carr has you, he usually has you. You're going down. You're going down. Yeah, Stetson leading the team in tackles. Leading the team in sacks, leading the team in tackles for loss. Second on the team in interceptions. I think he led the team in forced fumbles this year, too. Is that all? Yeah, <laughs> what else is there? Third and 12. The out pattern that has been so effective caught by Hancock, but he will be far short of what is needed for the first down as Dominic Opp makes the tackle up around the 28. No doubt about it. You're getting ready to go for it one more time. Yep. It's a lot, lot better situation, though, to be dealing with. Looks like it'd be about fourth and six. And it was, uh, would have been fourth and 12. Fourth and five is what it's going to be. As we into the final minute of the third quarter. And I tell you, some of the most uh, kind of anxious teams are the two nine-man teams waiting to go. Exactly. They thought they'd be playing at about, <laughs> about yeah, right, noon. Right about, yeah, soon. <laughs> thought they'd be warming up now. Pass on fourth is stopped short. Or no, 
forward progress. Progress. Him, yep, yep, forward progress. He got past the sticks. They're going to give him the first down, move the chains. Big time pickup there on fourth down. So the fourth down play does work for a first down. Yeah, when he first caught it, you could see. Yep, yep, close, very close, but he got it. Yep, Ethan Miller making the catch. Yeah, those nine-man teams figured that they would be warming up at about now. Yeah, like you said, I think they were hoping to go on the field at about noon, and don't know if that's going to happen now, but. We've had a lot of penalties. We've had a lot of pass plays. All those types of things make a game a little bit longer. Delayed handoff to Hancock on first and ten. Nothing there for Carlin. It's tough to run a delayed hand handoff to Hancock. He's your thumper. He's a guy that you want to pick up the, the tough yards, but he had to stop and start there, try to be a little bit shifty. Not really his game, but. That's our third quarter. We made it through three, and Hazen has a 42 to 22 lead on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard. Fourth quarter's next. We are back for the start of the fourth. 12 minutes left in this Class A championship game where Hazen is trying to slow the Offensive drive here of WNG, but leading by 20 points. It is second down and 12 to go from the 20, eh, 23 yard line. And Broughton, as he has done a lot, looking to pass a little out and up and a little bit too far for the Cody Hancock, the intended receiver. Again, Hancock and Soloway on the year really close in terms of number of catches. Number one caught 24 passes coming into this game, and number 27 has 20, or no, has 11 uh, catches, I should say, 23 rushes. So, yeah, Hancock definitely number one uh, this year in terms of receiving. It was a great route. I mean, he, he ran the route well, but Dominic Opp wasn't really moving. He wasn't budging. He stayed in his spot, and there wasn't really anywhere for that route to go. On third and long. Broughton swings it out. It's caught by Soloway. And it'll be a fourth down play, but fourth and relatively short considering he were at third and 12, mm -hmm. all the way up to the 15. Like you said, a lot more manageable. Fourth and fourth and four beats the heck out of what would have been yep. a fourth and 12. And I don't know if they're going to go back into the empty with the two tight end set, but why not? It's been working for them. That was what got them that swing pass. They got them big yards there. And so it seems like they're going to spread it out a little bit. Yep. Uh, not an empty this time as Hancock stays in the backfield, but it is four receivers and it is fourth down. Broughton looking right, looking over the middle, pulls it down now, still looking for some help. Oh. And he loses the ball. And Hazen has to stop on fourth down, so the turnover is made anyway. But on top of that was Sterling Berger. The only thing is is that uh, Hazen has a few more yards on it to its side after the turnover on the fumble. But Tough. really, it didn't look like Broughton had uh, much help on this side. No, he was looking to throw, but he had a man maybe open in the middle, but he would have had to throw back across his body. It would have been kind of awkward. It got to a point where I don't know if he wanted to throw. I don't know if he wanted to run. He, if he could make up his mind here and he just loses the, yep, he, he goes the throw, tries to pull the ball back in and run, but he loses the handle on it. Tough break for Hunter, Hunter Broughton. Hazen's going the other way. I think that's Berger's first fumble recovery this year. And Hayes, so somebody's defense in the second half has finally stopped someone. <laughs> we just saw it. Now Hazen back on the offensive side. Carr rides Borneman, gives him the ball. And Breyer is up to the 25. It only took a quarter, but a defense finally showed up to make a play. Yeah, you go back to that fourth down play, and boy, Hunter Fears was coming hard too mm -hmm. at, at, at Broughton too, so Hunter didn't have much of a chance to stop and look around. Not at all. Looks like about a pickup of six. Bornemann again. Hazen was so effective working off the 
right side of its offensive line in the first half, and now the left side of the offensive line is getting asked to move move the pile a little bit. And it's starting to happen. You see them moving the ball very well on the run game anyway, so it, it, it seems it doesn't matter if it's right, left, or up the middle. They're picking up positive yards every time they run the rock. Third and short. Carl just take it himself. No, he'll hand off to Borneman, and he will pick up the first down, and he gets to the edge to the outside. Borneman's trying to break it big downfield, being chased with the angle a little bit, the stiff arm to the 15, and on a third and one, Borneman takes it all the way down to the Sioux 13. That's a big-time run. He's been bottled up here in the second half. He hasn't had an opportunity to get out, find some space, but that's what he's been trying to do. He had a couple of those runs in the first half, mainly in the first quarter, but here, Breaks through the line, switches the ball to the outside arm. Great fundamentals there, and he's just gone, but kind of got some tired legs, I think, because if this was a fresh running back, he might have <laughs> been gone the distance on that one. You never want to get caught from behind, but that was a great, great run. Simpson had just a little bit of an angle. He used it to his advantage. Hey, Jamal and I will be selecting a local Chevy dealer player of the game at the conclusion of all four of our Dakota Bowl championships. After a long run by Borneman, Maybe foreshadowing. Ball oh. is loose on the turf. Car covers it back up. Loss of about three. It might be, Could in be his considered, favor. huh? <laughs> and there's Breyer getting uh, getting a little bit of a breather again in the first half. If you weren't with us this morning, boy, he took a couple of just wicked licks. 245 yards rushing. The last touchdown Hazen scored was his third. So he's been the workhorse today. And while he does, you see those yards, he's got 245, but he's earned them the hard way by taking those physical shots. He has had some long runs, but he's taken some big-time hits today. Farmers Union Insurance replay. It looked like he was trying to get the ball to Stefan. Carr fakes to Stefan, keeps it now, looks for a downfield block. Carr in for the touchdown. He scores it from 16. So the defensive stop, the first defensive stop of the second half turns into points. On the other end of that, so Hazen's defense helps set up its offense. It scores again, and the lead is now 48-22. Borneman goes to the bench. Stinson Carr says, it's my time to shine. I'm going to take this one in myself. Takes the read option, takes it in. That, that play's been there all day. He's executed all day. He's got how many touchdowns now? Carr? One, two, three, four. There's another player of a game candidate right there. The two point did not work the last time, so it's now a single point opportunity. Fears is the kicker, Carr is the holder. And it is good, so it's a 49 to 22 lead. And WNG was trading blows for a while here in the third quarter and into the fourth. They tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe. it's hard to do that when you're down though. you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe when you're down all right the kickoff when we come back to the Dakota Bowl it took two minutes and 27 seconds to go 81 yards and five play cars 17 yard touchdown is what they'll give him officially and the long run in there was Briar Borneman that helped set that up on a third down and one. He popped it. Popped it big. Again. <laughs> I would say yet again. I think he's, he's earned the, the rest of the game off, but who knows. Squib kick, no return. Sue take over near their 35. Well, they're going to they're send Bonnerman back out there, play a little defense now. But this is the Sioux team I expected to see, a team that would, you know, possibly face some adversity in the first half and come out guns a-blazing in the second half and show some fight, show the grit, show what they're all about. And they're not going to quit here in the fourth quarter. They're down big. But the team's not going to go away. They're going to continue to fight. The fans are still behind them, supporting them. And a lot of heart being showed by this Sioux team. And Broughton's arm's been getting a workout here today. He fakes the short, looking to go on two long verticals, and he still is alive to try and pass it. 
Ooh. And I don't know who he was trying to pass it to, just get rid of it. It was tipped by a Hazen player. You got to put that one in the fifth row. When you're throwing that away, you want to get rid of it, make sure it gets out of there. That ball almost got picked off. Dangerous throw there, but credit him keeping the play alive. You take a look at this, a lot of pressure up the middle, and here comes Hazen. So he has to break it to the outside, breaks a tackle here, keeps it alive. But when you go to throw this ball away, you got to make sure you get it as far away as possible. Well, it was an all-out sail deep. There was double verticals on that far side. So, I mean, Broughton absolutely needed needed time. 151 yards passing now for him. 31 attempts. Like you said, his arm is definitely getting the workout. Right, attempt number 32 is coming up right now. And that has been the successful play. It's a little out caught by Simpson up to the 40. Mm -hmm. Simpson and Soloway. And, well, even Hancock have had some of those out patterns, those six, seven-yard outs. And like we talked about, it, it's not necessarily dink and dunk, but you keep taking that short one, the short one, the short one, and they're hoping it's going to open up the vertical game. They've had their chances. They've taken a couple shots, but they haven't really been able to hit the big one over the top yet. So but as long as they can keep taking that the five, six, seven yards that you get there, you got to take it when at you least, get it. Yeah, at least you're moving it. Exactly. Third and five. Broughton. Ooh, nice. Oh, he like almost came oh. up with that. Soloway had to adjust to the ball, made a diving stab at it, and now it's fourth down. Really no reason to punt, is there? Of course not. I mean, they're, they're going for it. They've been in four down territory since the second quarter, I got to believe. Ball needs to cross the 44. Four wideouts for Broughton. Looking to his right. A little scramble roll. Heaves it too far for everyone. Incomplete. Hazen takes over. Broughton did the right thing, though. You gotta you gotta take a shot. Oh, absolutely. On, on, on fourth down, it makes no sense to throw the ball away or just run out of bounds. You gotta take a shot. And he had a man there, he just couldn't get it to him. But that's that's the right play in that situation. You throw the ball down the field and try to get lucky and make something happen. In and out of the hands of Borneman, but Truth be told, he shouldn't catch it. Here's a little isolation on a Farmers Union insurance replay. Stop and go route. He's well covered there still. Chad Borneman's had such a great day. I think we'll let that one slide. Man, he shouldn't, like I said, he shouldn't catch it anyway on fourth down. Exactly. He probably wanted to, though. <laughs> <laughs> And Coach Fillion will take a timeout because of personnel. Someone wasn't quite in who was supposed to be in. I think they're trying to rotate some of the uh, of the younger linemen and that type of thing into the game here. That's great. Like it's the first time the teams made it. Not the first time. Yeah, first time that they've made it to the state title game. You want to make sure everybody gets their time to shine. field gets to enjoy the experience you got to be enjoying it either way when your team's up 49 to 22 but yeah. still in nine man the top ranked maroons from divide county making the drive from crosby and uh, that region all the way across the top end of the state here to grand forks taking on the number two ranked rockets from new rockford cheyenne equally unbeaten on the year that is the game that'll be coming up a little bit later here on nbc north dakota sports that's next in line of course double a triple a to follow This is a heck of a game to kick off the Dakota Bowl. You know, class A game going a couple hours. Tons, hey, of, tons of scoring. So Coach Fillion has the guys in that he wants. Carr remains the quarterback. And he will hand it off on an inside give to Lyons. And he has the first down. And here comes a flag. Lyons with a very nice move and run all the way inside the 10. I'm, unfortunately, Nate, I don't think it's going to count. Nope. They're going to call Connor Dahl. I think that's Connor Dahl on the outside yep. for a hold. Tough call to make, but they're going to get the wide receiver out there on the edge for a hold, and this one's coming back. Would have been the biggest offensive play of the day for Lines. Holding green, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Yeah, outside on the edge, tries to 
seal his man off, but ends up kind of getting him in, inside the shoulder pads there. It, it was only a little bit. It didn't Not seem much. like it was, yep. <laughs> you know, a lot, but yeah. it was enough to draw the flag. Chaz Tuplin there playing defense, number 66. He's a freshman. He actually, I mean, the penalty is 10 yards, but you, you're only a little two yards back of the line of scrimmage from where it happened. Inside handoff to Stefan. He'll try to get to the edge on the outside. Cuts it back up to the middle as the outside was taken away by Conway for the pickup to about the 34. Gets on the yard is right back. No big deal. Been really impressed with Hazen's offensive line today. They've been running that spread option. They've been running that play very well, and the offensive line has been opening up holes all day, getting a lot of push up front. Been a great day by the Hazen offensive line. Hence, Kryle Hill, Cizlak, and Moss, and others who have rotated in. But that's the main starting five for Hazen, and here comes Borderman trying to work his magic once again. He does. Oh. He ducks under a tackle. Borderman takes it to the wide side, and he is going to go 34 yards for the touchdown. He ducked right underneath the guy who caught nothing but air, and Borderman sails away to another score. you got to be kidding. I thought he was pent up. And right when you said trying to work magic, sure enough, he pops out of the crowd, and he's gone for a touchdown. I don't know how he got out of that. Let's take a look at the replay here. Great vision, great footwork, keeps his balance. Whoop. And he's gone. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a day this guy's had. He's going to wow. remember this one for the rest of his life. Briar Borneman missed the first five games of the year and has come back and has been so instrumental in Hazen's continued improvement in the second half of the season. And then it's uh, Hazen's close to dominance in the playoffs. So is he making up for lost time or what? Yep. 55. Make it, it no nope, stays at 55. 55 22 with 33 point lead now for the Hayes and Bison. We'll be right back with more on this Class A championship game after you see this. Back at the Alaris Center, NBC North Dakota Sports, Lee Timmerman, Jamal Sent, Spencer, Scott Westerberg, and the entire crew bringing you four championship games as Briar Borneman just. Cracked off the last touchdown, a 34-yard touchdown drive, which makes us reach for the record book. He, If he's not over it, he's close to breaking Wade Kittleson's record of 280 yards uh, back in 97. Wade, one of the many outstanding Kittleson brothers who played for the Aggies and later played uh, for NDSU. Three plays on that touchdown drive. 91 hasn't, seconds. Hasn't taken them long all day, and I think that's helped keep the defense fresh. Well, I know it did in the first half. They've been on the field a little bit longer in the second half, yeah. but quick strikes all day. And through the air has been about the only means of moving the ball for the Sioux here in the second half, and now you'll give it on the ground, and you'll just let your big guy pound it, your gear. 540 away and 33 points down. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say, you know, you're ever going to quit, but, <laughs> you know, the tea leaves are not looking your way. Very true, very true. And that, that last that last drive was a backbreaker. Like I said, when you're driving and you're trading blows and you're going point for point, but you're already down double digits, it's kind of hard to get back in the game. And then once you get even more points after that, you can't get the, the scores. It's, you know, the party's almost close to being over. Carly Hancock with a gain of five. Now his brother will try it, but not much there on the right side. Bison closed that one off. Actually may have lost a yard on the play. I'm not going to say no gain, third and five. And it's tough. Every team comes into these games expecting to win with a game plan they believe is going to get them over the top. And if you're WNG, you came into this one hoping for sure that you were going to be able to pull it out. But 
as the game goes on. Things don't go your way. Broughton reverses, throws the long out, and it is caught oh. on the far side by Simpson. Simpson works his way up the sideline, steps through a tackle. Now Simpson's going to split his way and go into the end zone. This is going to be a 62-yard touchdown run. No flags. That was impressive. Tyler Simpson made it happen after the catch. Hunter Broughton bought all sorts of time back there, just running around, trying to keep the play alive, trying to make something happen. Reverses field, fires a strike. I thought this one was knocked down, but great concentration. Whoa. Underneath his nice legs. <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> I knew it wasn't a clean catch, and it was a lot more impressive than <laughs> In slow motion than it was the, the in second, the initially. The second look was a lot better than the first. You're right. That is a very, very impressive grab. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear it in the mics, but the crowd kind of went, whoa, because they're looking <laughs> at the replay the same time we are. Two-point conversion. Broughton is cut down short, so it's 55 to 28. There's that fight from the Sioux that we talked about, never giving up. You know, down big, but you're still trying to score, still making <laughs> things happen. Take another yeah. look. We could look at this a bunch of times. This Oops. is neat. Off, off the thigh, between the legs, like he's dribbling the basketball, pulls it up off the ground. <laughs> nice job. Nice job, Tyler. Great concentration. Good hands. Four sixteen to go, so that comes less than two minutes after Hazen's score. I'll tell you, these... Teams aren't breaking the huddle very fast. They're probably they're fine. We're staying here as long as we can, <laughs> just to try and catch our breath. Exactly. Both teams going up and down, up and down. Three plays, 67 yards, and most of that was on the 62-yard touchdown reception by Simpson. Just under two minutes, a minute and 51 on that drive. Right. So Hazen scored in three plays. <laughs> and then on the third play, after the Sioux get the ball back. WNG, three plays. Off they go. <clears throat> well, we're just a few seconds from the afternoon in the central time zone. <laughs> <laughs> this this <laughs> game's been going on for a while. Deep kick. Borneman take it at the 11. And he is up to about the 28-yard line. Yeah, it's lunchtime, isn't it? <laughs> what do you see there you like, Jamal? I'll take, a, I'll take a pretzel. Okay, I'll get you one of those. Appreciate it, appreciate it. How about yourself? I'll be back at about 3. <laughs> <laughs> After, after I get your pretzel and take a nap. I was going to say, yeah, I'll <laughs> go down there and find you sleep <laughs> with my pretzel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, you would kind of make the assumption that Hazen would like to grind a little clock here, but as many big plays as happened on the ground, I don't know if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Lines will try to bust one up, and he does. He picks up 12, 13 yards on the play. It's hard to run clock when you're getting 15 yards a pop, you know, and, and I think that's what you, you said. You're tr they're trying to run clock, but last possession, you got the 32-yard run, and they just keep breaking long runs, drive after drive. Another Bison first down. Yes, indeed. There's been a ton of those today. As Borneman comes to the sideline, being replaced and I don't know if he's going to go back in but uh, you know, what a what a workhorse day it's been for Breyer. No need for him to go back in at all. First and ten play. They hand it off to Lines again. Boy Nate's doing a good job of keeping both arms around the ball. Sound football here especially when you're trying to run the clock you don't want to turn the ball over you don't want to make any mistakes two hands on the ball. First and foremost, protect the rock. 286 that is yards. There we go. That's a record. The 286 yards today for Briar Borneman, a Dakota Bowl record, and not just a Class A record. We mean all classes, all games, everything within the Dakota Bowl. So congratulations to Borneman. Boy, what a what an effort for him. What did that say? 20, Two, 286, 27? 27 carries. And I tell you what, he goes back to Hazen for the rest of his days. He is the man. <laughs> walking, walking around town telling everybody, you remember that time in the state championship game? 
I have a record setting performance. As Stefan is near first down. Hunter is a sophomore, five foot seven. I think he got the first. No, a little bit short. Whatever you do, don't measure it. <laughs> Keep the clock tick, going, moving. Tick, tick, tick. Let's. <laughs> Whatever you decide <laughs> is fine with everybody. You're right. Uh, <laughs> It'll be third down in inches. <laughs> and they give it to the fullback again. And he looks like he got it. Got the inches needed. Not many more. You know, you know, both nine man teams are sitting in the back going, oh, man, yep. when's it going to be our turn? Oh, now they're just rubbing it in on us, aren't they? <laughs> but then again, as much as the crew rubs it in about all this lovely lunch food, they're not getting any either. Nope, they're stuck <laughs> in the truck. So you can show it all you want. <laughs> We're inside of two minutes of this Class A title game, and the Bison are loving the way it looks. Carr will roll back out of it. And he tried to get his receiver to break. He did, and floats a dangerous pass up, and it is caught. It is caught over there. I think that's Mason Weedrick. When it's going your way, it's going your yeah. way. But there's Carr just directing traffic. He, he looked back and said, no, I want you to go out, even though Weedrick was probably primarily blocking on that play, and it did pick up a first. I'm sure Mason's he, a freshman. He's got no problem going out to catch a pass. So fine, I can, I can stop blocking for a minute. <laughs> NDSU fans having a little fun with the, the Bison Sioux yep. nicknames. Carr comes out. So his day is done. And the handoff, which is somewhat predictable with all the most of the JV kids in there. I think that's Chase uh, uh, Bruner playing quarterback. He's another freshman, number 10. Mm -hmm. Robbie Fillion, number 82, running in a play. Rory Olson, 76. Matt Mole, 74. One more snap, I think. More than likely. Yep. Take Look it. at Bruner, just, he, hey, I'm checking her out like a vector, and I'm going <laughs> to wait till the, the clock gets to two, snap it, knee it. And if the officials take their time to get this set, we should be done. And we are. And we are. So congratulations to Hazen, the Bison, with a 55-point effort today. Their first state championship since an 11-B in 1996. And it was a record-setting day for Briar Borneman. And in the record book, Hazen forever will be your 2012 Class A state champion. And there they go to celebrate. And congrats to a great season from WNG. Played their hearts out. Had to come from behind all through the playoffs. They just could not do that today. Great effort from both teams. Hazen comes out on top, but WNG has nothing to hang their head about. And to get into this Dakota Bowl in the quarterfinals, Hazen had to beat Hart River, the third-rated team in the state, who beat them during the regular season, won that game 41-14, and then last week defeated Stanley Powers Lake, stopping a 22-game winning streak, winning that game with defense, 14 to nothing. and today they won it with offense. And it's easy to say, you look at this game and go, man, 55 points. They must have won some shootouts. But like you just said, that last week, 14 to nothing game shows that if they can play any type of style, they can grind it out, they can shut you down, but they can put up points with the best of them. And they did that today with an impressive 55-point effort. Great sportsmanship yeah. being showed by the two sides, yeah. shaking hands. Tom Nesvold was, you saw him, mm -hmm. the, uh, the head coach from the Sioux in that line. Only one team gets the end of the year happy, and that team this year, Hazen. True. It's always a, it's always a long bus ride home for the, for the team that comes up a little bit short, but the underclassmen have an opportunity to return here next year and make a push 
for the seniors. It's not the way you want to go out, but to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of kids who'd like to be in your shoes right now just to have the yeah. opportunity. So. Yep, hey. Hazen had 15 seniors last year, thought it was going to be their year, lost by a point in the semifinals. A young team comes in, wins it. One of those underclassmen had a great day, didn't he, Scott? Yeah, he did. A record-setting day for Briar Borneman, over 280 yards on the ground, a new Dakota Bowl record. The Bison also scored 55 points, more than anyone in a championship game. Briar, take me through the emotions right now. It's probably the best feeling I've ever had in my life, honestly. I've, I've worked so hard for this, and so is the team. And that offensive line, beautiful job today. They did. They, they should be proud of themselves. Uh, outstanding game for you, a huge game for you, 286 yards, four touchdowns. What was working on offense? The line, man. We got the push, and that, that, that worked. That's all we needed. First state title uh, for Hazen since 96. You guys haven't been here in a long time. What's this mean for the school and, and for this group to have that, that title? It, it means so much. We've worked year in, year out. I mean, we came one point last year, and we felt like this was the year that we should take it. And it Very was. physical game. Saw you guys at the sidelines a lot, you know, shaking that one off. This was, this was a tough battle, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. This was one of the hardest games of the season, and we expected it to be. You guys started out, lost a couple games early. You weren't with the team at the time. You got back. You guys started winning. What was the secret these last six, seven weeks for you guys? Um, our chemistry, man. We were like a family, and we all stuck together. That's what it took. All right, congratulations. Go celebrate. Hey, thank you. Yep. Guys, back up to you. Thank you, Scott. Record-setting effort for Briar Borneman and the Hazen offense winning the Class A championship. Let's join the, uh, the, the awards presentation. Number one, Cody Hancock. Number two, Shane Getchell. Number three, Reese Schell. Number four, Hunter Broughton. Number five, John Heath. Number six, Christian Soto. Number seven, Tyler Simpson. Number eight, Chase Conway. Number 13, Brennan Lavelle. Number 21, Nathan Gunning. Number 26, Lane Burnson. Number 27, Calder Soloway. Number 28, Chaz Tufflin. Number 29, Ethan Miller. Number 30, Carly Hancock. Number 33, Logan Tufflin. Number 50, Brent Ramsas. Number 51, Hawkins Smetty. Number 52, Michael LeMay. Number 53, Brandon Chafant. Number 54, Logan Hermes. Number 55, Devin Carinta. Number 63, Tim Kraft. Number 65, Clark Gunning. Number 66, Zach Zahn. Number 75, Dustin Weeks. And number 77, Michael Shep. Cheerleaders, Brittany Nelson and Nicole Buck. And statistician, Jade Teske, Natalie Stivers, Parker Bush, and Lindsey Schneibel. Assistant coaches for West Hope, Newburgh, Glenburn, Anthony Lee, Lane Fleur, and Zach Hassler. And the head coach is Tom Nesvold. And now individuals from Hazen. Number one, Brett Bornman. Number three, Hunter Fears. Number six, Mason Wiedrich. Number seven, Stetson Carr. Number eight, Connor Dahl. Number nine, Dominic Opp. Number 10, Chase Bruner. Number 11, Hunter Steffen. Number 12, Mason Fault. Number 19, Josh Earhart. Number 20, Logan Seiler. Number 21, Tyler Wassum. Number 23, Jonah Zimmerman. Number 25, Carl Hayes. Number 33, Nate Leinitz. Number 50, Jaden Reich. Number 51, Evan Reich. Number 52, Kyle Larson. Number 54, Denzel Sanders. Number 55, Demarcus Smith. Number 57, Seth Kryle. Number 61, Patrick McCarthy. Number 63, Austin Hintz. Number 66, Hunter Richter. Number 73, Connor Hill. Number 74, Matt Mole. Number 75, Sterling Berger. Number 76, Rory Olson. Number 77, Austin Cisek. Number 79, Michael Moss. Number 80, Starlin Summer. Number 82, Robbie Fillion. Number 84, Alex Valley. Number 86, Scott Bornman. And number 88, Josh Schneider. Cheerleaders, Katie Palmer, Kaylee Knoll, 
and Delaney Wiedrich. Statisticians, Kim Elwine, Marissa Fisk, Kaylee Elbertson, and Savannah Winkler. Assistant coaches for Hazen, Brett Johnsrud, Justin Ingold, Warren Redrack, Paul Wallander, Joel Marshall, and Chris Sorensen. And the head coach of Hazen, Rick Billion. Each year, the North Dakota High School football coaches vote for the outstanding coach in each division. This award is sponsored by the North Dakota High School Coaches Association. On hand to present the award is Randy Johnson of Hazen, assistant to the executive secretary of the North Dakota High School Coaches Association. The 2012 Division A Coach of the Year is Rick Fillion from Hazen. The North Dakota Division A coaches have selected the following individuals as finalists for the Powerade Outstanding Senior Athlete Award. We would like the players in attendance to come out onto the field to be recognized. The Division A finalists are from Region 1 from Maple Valley Enderlin, Jordan Haslow. Region 2 from Laramore, PJ Peterson. Region 3 from Stanley, Abe Rorick. And Region 4 from Kildare, Brock Pitsley. And the 2012 Division A Powerade Outstanding Senior Athlete is Abe Rorick from Stanley. At this time, would representatives from the 2012 Division A State Runner-Up Team, West Hope, Newburgh, Glenburn, please come forward to receive your award. And the 2012 Division A Dakota Bowl champions, the Hazen Bison. So the Bison win it, scoring a Dakota Bowl record 55 points and rushing for 492 yards today. 55-28, your final score. So the Bison win it. Congratulations to Hazen. Jamal and I will be right back with your local Chevy dealer player of the game after you see this. Well, Jamal, there's no way we could miss this one. Our local Chevy dealer player of the game, well, that has to be number one, Briar Borneman. What a day for Borneman. 27 carries, 286 yards. And he did it in so many ways. He did it between the tackles with physical runs, breaking tackles, throwing stiff arms. He did it getting to the edge, being shifty, making men miss. Now you think you got him, but you don't. He's gone. Tons of long runs for touchdowns, well-deserved. Took some big shots, but he stayed in the game. It was a great day by him. That was his last touchdown, a 34-yarder. The actual, the, that was the run that put him in the record books, and Breyer had a long run of 58 yards. So the junior, congratulations to Borneman. That 492 yards rushing today, that's also a Dakota Bowl record for a team on those 51 carries. So that's not a record for most attempts, but it is a record for most yards as Hazen today did an outstanding job on the ground, averaging 9.6 yards per carry. So almost 10 times every time they rushed the ball. So Hazen finishes the year 
at 10 and 2. West Hope, Newburgh, Glenburn at 8 and 5. So Class A is wrapped up and for the last time in this particular contest on the Farmers Union Insurance scoreboard, we get to say Hazen wins it 55-28, your final.